know, let's How get cool. the it's, city it's commission, the Marine City, uh, underway. Regular meeting Thursday, November 1st, 2018. Can we start with a short, uh, short moment of silence for our dearly departed? Let's please stand for Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mayor Vandabosch. Here. Commissioner Avery. Present. Commissioner Hendricks. Here. Commissioner Callahan. Here. Commissioner Lawson. Here. Commissioner Lefley. Here. Commissioner Turner. Here. City Manager Lovett. Here. Moving on to communications. I need a motion to receive and file Sinclair County Office of Homeland Security Emergency Management uh, certification for accreditation for Mary Ellen McDonald's. TIFA board regular meeting minutes September 18th <coughs> and caregiver expo. So moved. Support. Any questions or concerns on communication? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Moving on to public comment. Anyone in attendance is welcome to address the city commission. Please state your name and address and please limit your comments to five minutes. One of you guys. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, commissioners. As part of your packet, uh, you have a proposal regarding TIFO, which I'm going to read for the record. Over the past month or so, we've learned a lot about TIFA, specifically what we stand to lose if we drop it, that we are not sure as a body about the new changes coming about in January and what those changes will allow us to do moving forward for the city, <clears throat> and that there may be ways to use TIFA to help maintain or fix our roads. Because if there is even a possibility that TIFA could continue to be a benefit to our city, I'm calling for the Marine City Commission to reverse the decision to discontinue TIFA and instead decide, decide instead to put it on hold. This would ensure that we do not lose the funds that are already in the TIFA account. Those funds, if TIFA is dissolved, would not go to the city. Most would go back to the county, and a lot of what remains is under contractual obligation. So we would not get much use from it in the general fund. We would lose the favorable tax base which TIFA has accumulated over the past 30 years. And we would lose any ability to get matching grants uh, that the city has been able to in the past with the TIFA program. Putting, on, uh, putting TIFA on hold would allow us the time to explore the changes in the TIFA law coming in January and develop a plan on how to use TIFA to the city's advantage moving forward. To this end, I'm calling for the establishment of a tripartite committee made up of commission and planning committee members and the TIFA board, as well as the city manager. This group would meet weekly, much as the infrastructure committee did, and come up with a plan on how TIFA could be used moving forward to benefit <clears throat> Marine City. If we discontinue TIFA, but discover later that we could indeed have used it for our benefit, we've lost all the advantages we've built up over the last 30 years. In the event that nothing further can be found uh, uh, useful in the TIFA program, we haven't lost anything by putting it back in uh, play for the time being. We can always discontinue <coughs> it later. I'm asking the city commission to do the following. Move this evening to pass a reversal of the decision to dis discontinue TIFA. 
pass a motion to put TIFA on hold if this is necessary. I'm not sure that that needs to be part of the process. And to pass a motion tonight establishing a commission with the task members outlined previously to renew uh, upcoming changes to TIFA and come up with a plan about how TIFA could be used moving forward. If we establish the committee tonight, you guys can wait until after the election. Uh, we'll have new members on the commission, and those people might be considered for the, the committee. Mr. Mayor, you've been looking for additional funds to help pay for the roads, uh, to uh, allay some of the tax burden on the, on the citizens. This could be a possibility. You shouldn't ignore it. Since this particular motion was not part of tonight's agenda, uh, it may be necessary for someone to make a motion to add it to this evening's agenda. I don't know if that's necessary. But moving forward, I think we should take this action tonight. Again, we have a lot to lose if we don't. We have nothing to lose if we do. So I ask you to put Marine City before any partisan biases you might have on this issue and come up with a favorable rule this evening. Thank you very much. Good evening, Charles Signory, 224 North Elizabeth. Um, I have nothing to say on TIFA. He, Joe just said it all, and I thought he did a great job. Thank you, Joe. I, uh, I echo those uh, same feelings that he has with a uh, committee with TIFA, Planning Commission, and uh, you folks sitting up here. Uh, I'd also like to, at this time, thank the outgoing commissioners and thank you for your service. Each one of you, it's not easy being up there, I'm sure, getting the darts thrown at you. And um, I appreciate everything that you've done personally and uh, for the city and the residents. Um, looking forward to Tuesday. Hope everybody gets out and votes. We uh, definitely need uh, some new ideas and work together and come together as a full commission. And I'm looking forward to seeing a new full commission up here. Uh, whether I sit on it or not doesn't matter, really. But I hope uh, for everybody's sake that Marine City is a better uh, outcome for it. Thank you. Anyone else like Hello, everyone. My name is Cheryl Verkamen, 321 Chartier. I am the no-show from <laughs> last week at the... Um, the meet and greet that we had at the Washington Life Center. I just wanted everyone to know, uh, go on public record by saying that the reason why I couldn't attend that meeting was because of obviously a, a prior uh, fundraiser that we had for special needs children at my restaurant, The Little Bar. So um, with that being said, I am looking forward to serving the community if I get on the commission. Um, looking forward to a lot of changes looking forward to working together, looking forward to being a voice of our community. Um, we have a, everybody keeps saying that we live on the gem of the river, right? And I love Marine City. I wouldn't live here if I didn't. So I'm looking forward to seeing um, what Tuesday may lay, right? Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? Yes. Kim Turner, 361 Maine. I just want to say thank you to our commissioners that will be having their last meeting tonight. And I want to congratulate my husband, Jim, for nine years of dedicated service. You've done a lot, and you deserve a lot of praise. And I'm so proud of you. I love you, baby. <laughs> wow, who wants to go next? Who wants to follow that up? <laughs> no one. Anyone else like to speak? <laughs> Hearing none, moving on to <laughs> approval of the agenda. <laughs> Can I get a motion to approve the agenda, please? I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Support. support. Motion and support. Any questions on the agenda? 
Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Moving on to approval of the City Commission regular minute, minutes, October 18, 2018. Mr. Avery. I make a motion that we approve the minute meetings from the meeting of October 18. Support. Support. Motion support. Any corrections or deletions to the minute? <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Carried. Moving on to the consent agenda. Need a motion to approve the consent agenda with the personal action, the pension plan actuarial uh, June 30th, 2017, the pension plan actu actuarial June 30th, 2018, retiree health care. Um, actuarial June 30th, a special event permit for the Old Newsboys annual paper <coughs> sale, and the special event permit for the lighted Santa parade. I move what you said. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> Second that motion, please. Motion support. Any questions? Yes. No questions, but um, I'd just like to read off here. For the old newsboys, our, our paper <coughs> sales are going to be Friday, um, December 7th, and Saturday, December 8th. Um, Friday, it'll be from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., and uh, Saturday, 7 a.m. to 1 p.m., and please watch out for them in the streets. And then the second one is, just for the Santa Lita, uh, Lighted Santa Parade, is the November 20th. Uh, from 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock, just so everybody knows. Any other con questions or concerns? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Avery. Yes. Commissioner Hendricks. Yes. Commissioner Callahan. Yes. Commissioner Clausen. Yes. Commissioner Lovely. Yes. Commissioner Turner. Yes. Yes. Moving on to unfinished business, we have ordinance 2018 0 0 0 6 uh, sidewalks, outdoor sales, and cafes, second reading and adoption. <coughs> I get a motion to approve. So move. And can I get support? Support. Motion support. Questions and concerns on it? Yes, Lisa. Um, did we resolve the issue of the seating along Broadway where we have the benches in? Morning? Yes. Okay. And? They're staying then? <laughs> okay. There's language in the ordinance that allows us to effectively deal with that. Okay. okay. And we did, yeah, I see that we got the language in there for the eight <coughs> foot for the umbrellas. Yep. Or exceedingly tall pedestrians. <laughs> yeah. We did. Anything else? It's not real clear on the ten foot triangle area formed. Can you elaborate? So at the point where the sidewalk comes together between the two roads, you go ten feet back from the corner on both sides. Okay. And that triangle, you can't have your um, sidewalk cafe area in that triangle area. So wide point of the triangle like extending to the road? I'm, the, again, the I'm not clear. The <coughs> I, I'm still confused. Draw me a picture. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Go ahead. That's fine. From the point of the sidewalk, you measure 10 feet back on each corner. Point of the and then you connect okay. those two lines. All right. And in that triangle area, you cannot have a sidewalk Stop. cafe. Because that, in essence, is the flow of traffic for people that oh, okay, okay, going from one direction to gotcha. the other. All right, thank you. Yep. Okay. Any other questions or concerns? Roll call vote, please. Commissioner Hendricks. No. Commissioner Callahan. Yes. Commissioner <coughs> Yes. Commissioner Yes. Commissioner Turner. Yes. Commissioner Bosch. Yes. Commissioner Yes. <clears throat> All right, moving on to the Historical Society of Marine City, the Mosaics. Good evening, Heather Bachram, 
the Historical Society. Um, I believe you all received copies of the maps with the new locations, um, plus um, the note that I included with it. And uh, if you like, we can go down from one to the other. However, I, I will say that um, Mike Ittrich had uh, given the recommendation that mosaics could go into Nautical Mile Park. However, uh, Commissioner Claussen informed me this week that that was not the case. I'm not exactly sure why or if it's just the matter of location. Do you want me to go map by map? Or do you just have any questions about any Do we have any questions? Heather, yeah. I don't think it's necessary. I mean, it's pretty detailed what you provided us, so. Yes. Yeah, I, did, I appreciate did. the fact that you reviewed all this with Mr. Itrich and mm -hmm. addressed those concerns. I did speak with Mike earlier today. He identified these locations as the ones with the minimal impact. Yeah. There are a couple that may have to be moved a, a foot or two based upon when we do the mystic with underground um, utilities or sprinkler lines. Right. And of course, we you know before we'd even start, we have to get mystic to come in and prove anything that we do uh, digging down that far. <coughs> um, any. Any water um, lines for the sprinkler systems, we would be responsible for moving them if we had to move them slightly, and hopefully we wouldn't have to. Um, the civic women's, uh, they are very excited. They want to, to redo some of their <coughs> work, and so they will inform me uh, the locations that they want the most. We did pick four out uh, in that park. And yeah. then as far as Nautical Mile Park, um, I know the, the objection, possible objection in Nautical Mile Park was between the trees, which I agree um, we possibly could not do it there because if the trees are too close, then the root system would be in the way. But um, it, I, I'm not sure what the reason would be that we couldn't put them somewhere else in the park. Heather, is your plan to, how, do you have any of these ready to go already? The, the uh, mosaics, uh, four are completed. The fifth one is in process. We wouldn't be doing this until next spring because you can't do it until yeah. the weather is yeah. just right. Yes, Lisa. Um, I think you kind of have the same problem in Broadway Park with the trees. Um, there's two right in each of those corners. And I know the ones in the Rotary Park are the same issue. I guess. Um, my issue w with some of this is first we get piecemeal we had to ask for the sizes i think they're rather large and i think they're going to become an issue for um, the skateboarders and possibly injuries um, i wish they could have been flush with the ground my biggest concern <coughs> is that they require maintenance we would be doing the maintenance the and problem with that is, is I understand that, and I know you say that, and I understand, uh, it's not that I don't believe you. The issue is long term, how do we know for, we almost need like a perpetual fund. Well, we have a memorial fund, and that is what it is going to be used for. And that gets increased during time. We also have a fund, um, an endowment fund, and that is um, in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are funds that we receive every year from that. What is the cost to do the ceiling? The ceiling? You, you have to seal them twice a year. Oh, the ceiling, sorry. <laughs> um, it's a matter of um, 
spray. It probably, I imagine, maybe twenty dollars. Okay. But long term, we've run into this on some of the other ones where um, <coughs> we put things in, and then eventually the city gets stuck with it. I think. We have these nice parks, and I know we've added them to the master plan. And I would think that we would be better off to create some type of um, look at these parks to see what we really, we have no plan. And we continue to put things in. We got into a little bit of trouble with the last one that we put in. I understand there's somebody else waiting in the wings. I mean, I don't know how much more stuff that we can put into the parks. Um, <clears throat> Well, all I can say is that the, the uh, people that are taking care of the parks, of the landscaping, uh, that is primarily where these will go. They, are, they do want to see them go in. They feel they'll be um, a benefit to the landscaping because they're very beautiful. That's, I understand it, and I understand these people volunteer to take care of the parks because I'm in a group that takes care of a park also. But the parks are technically owned by everybody. And so it really shouldn't be up to a small group to decide what goes in these parks. This is something that we need to work on <coughs> as a community as a whole. What does everybody want to see in these parks? And so I understand people adopt them, but they adopt them to take care of them, not necessarily to decide what goes in them. That's what this board <coughs> is supposed to be doing. And we've added to the master plan, correct, the parks? So we were working on trying to come up with a better plan for our parks so that we, in the future, you know, are we going to have 80% green space? Are we going to have um, whatever in the park? Are we going to offer a water feature like everybody wants? We, we really need to have a better plan for some of this. So to me, I would rather table this a little <clears throat> bit longer so that we can have, really take a serious look at this and come up with a better plan for our parks before we get too well, deep in putting so much in them that... If you know. I may uh, interject, this is something that we started a long time ago, even before you were on the commission. And um, people have been excited about it. It's something that we are doing <coughs> for the people of Marine City. It, and it is the history of Marine City. It's the shipbuilding of Marine City. Okay. Mr. Turner. Mr. Turner. No, it's, I'll wait till you're finished. That's fine. I got plenty of time. That's okay. Uh, as far as I understand, <clears throat> this plan's been approved. You've come here numerous times. You've presented us dimensions and answered all our questions. The only reason you were coming back tonight was to work with Mr. Itrich to find proper locations that we mm -hmm. could agree on, correct? Yes. Okay. So there should be no more debate about the aspects of your plan. That's all been approved. It was just agree on the locations. Mr. Mrs. Lovely. Um, you did, I, I'm a little bit confused about being concerned about trees. When you met with Mr. Ittridge, uh, were the trees not there? Oh, you mean in the one, yes, in the, yeah. in the so, other parks, yes. Right, and there right. was plenty of space there would be, um, I think, well enough away from any root system, yes. And also, um, I find it a little bit ironic uh, that uh, looking at the city's fantastic maintenance history <laughs> of their property, mm -hmm. that the possibility of this not getting sprayed is being, being brought up to you. Uh, I, I thank you for all that you've done, and I hardly approve this. Do we need to have a motion? Yeah, we should be just approving uh -huh. the locations. <clears throat> We have never approved this particular project. The project that was approved eight years ago, what, or 10 years ago, was a complete 60 foot around circular uh, thing with mosaics and bushes and benches and everything else. This was not approved. That's why this is still here. So this particular project was not approved. That 60 foot around mosaic that was going in the Broadway Park was what got approved years ago. These were never approved. Yes, Mr. Turner. Thank you, Differ. You've been here a couple of times since then. You came back two, two visits ago to explain that the Mariner's Maze was not going to be happening. 
and that you were working on these individual mosaics to put around the park. You explained the dimensions, the, all the particulars were answered. So it came down to just what were suitable locations. The locations you chose initially were not suitable. You were asked to go back with Mr. Itrich, <coughs> find new locations, which you did. Thank you very much. And it's tonight's decision should be, are, we, are these locations acceptable? The, it's a totally, it's a totally new so, project. You've been recognized? <laughs> Bill. It doesn't matter, you don't. What is this? I, I, I'm kind of, because uh, I went and talked to Heather after the, she came to the Rotary Club and said that she need, needed the permission of the Rotary Club to put, to put it in the park. They discussed it and looked at the size of the foundation and where it was going to go, and it was going to take half the roots out of those trees. <coughs> so we said that we did not think that that was a suitable place for it. And Mike Itchard said that's the only place he would let it go. But I went and talked to Mike and asked him and told him that we said that we didn't think it was suitable there. He had the same concerns about the roots, but I can't speak for Mike because he's not here. Well, I mean, we obviously don't have to pick them there. So, it sounds like there's an objection to Rotary Park <clears throat> only. And that, you know, we have room in the other parks, I'm sure, for what we have. I would ask that Broadway Park trees be also looked at at the same time, the same issue. And our... Are we going to be able to, are you going to be able to make <coughs> some kind of decision this evening? Mr. Avery. <clears throat> the only one on this board who has any sense on being able to answer the questions of tree roots is you, Mayor. But our tree roots managed to push all the concrete and everything else around them out. I think if we excavate a spot to put the foundation in deep enough that the deer tree will probably survive. And that's enough. Most trees will do fine as long as you don't enter within the certain uh, drip line. But the problem with most of these trees, their drip lines are intersecting. And if you put anything underneath them, you are encroaching on their root base. So I'm not saying that they will die. But I'm just saying, every time you encroach on the root base, which is then at the outside edge of the leaf line, you do run the risk of killing the tree. You run the risk. Don't mean you're going to kill it, but, and most of these trees are right up tight to each other on the, on the leaf line. So they are connected. So anytime you place something underneath them, they're within the drip line of both trees at the same time. So that's just my professional opinion, but as far as location, it would be tough to put anything in a park if you went by that standard well, I think, rule. I think there are plenty of places in the parks that don't have trees, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that would not interfere with the electrical or anything at all like that. Could, you put, could you put any over at 300 Broadway? I'm sorry, what? Could you put any of these over at 300 Broadway? Heritage Park. Oh, Heritage Park. I, I haven't looked into that. I haven't asked about that. And, and there you do have lots and lots of trees. Mm -hmm. Certain areas. <coughs> Could we consider and maybe, again, taking a look at the placement where some of the trees are, where there's some concern with the trees, taking a look at 300 Broadway, Next month, you've got a new commission, pretty much. You've got three new commissioners coming on who are going to, they're going to be the ones who are going to be faced with having to deal with this, if there are any issues, having to replace trees, you know, issues with maintenance, that kind of thing. So it's going to be an issue that three new commissioners are going to inherit. And I'm not saying that, you know, the commissioners, outgoing commissioners aren't, can't make that de de decision, but they're not going to be here to deal with it afterwards. I'm not saying this isn't a good project. <coughs> I'm just saying that I think the people who are going to have to handle it should be the ones that have to make the decision on it. 
Mr. Avery. Oh, okay. Uh, I just wanted to add that this first came up in April or May of this year. And I believe we approved April 5th. without the specific locations. We did not approve. Go back well, and look. We'll have to check the minutes then. Yeah, be recognized, please. Same with you, Mr. Turner. I think Mr. Clausen. Well, like, like I said, the Rotary Club, she came to the Rotary Club to ask because that's what she was told. The Rotary Club, as a, as a club, said, why are she come, why is she coming to the Rotary Club and ask for permission when it's the city property? Let we, me interject looked, on that one. And then we looked because at Because I did ask that the shareholders yeah. not necessarily ask to provide permission, but I wanted the shareholders that are taking care of the parks at least have input. Yes. Because they are, they are helping us take care of the parks. And they do have a say. They never, not, they're not the yes or no, but they can actually help influence us. That's the reason I asked Mike Kittrich to please get in contact with the And, and I believe group. also they were talking about planting some flowers around that, that thing. And I think in the memo we got that the Rotary Club that maintains the park would have to maintain the flowers. Mm -hmm. They're going to maintain the, the monument. No. I, I made it very clear, Mr. Clausen, that if we did any landscaping around one of the mosaics, because you asked me that question, I said we would be the ones to take care of it. I made that quite clear because I didn't want to put any extra burden on the people who take care of the parks. Our historical society takes care of Drake <coughs> Park, and I know how much work it takes. I really do. Heather, I got to ask you one final question. Yes. And I mean this sincerely. You got to be asking yourself, why in the hell am I going through all this effort to create this beautiful thing for Marine City and donate it? Right? Are yeah. you scratching your head at this point in time saying, why am I doing this? Why don't I just step back and say, fine, yes. forget it? Well. Because you care, right? I do care. Awesome. And I think it's part of the history of Marine City. I think it would be a terrible shame. I'm sorry you had to go through this tonight. Uh, you know, if this got turned down, um, I'm sure we would find somebody who would love our mosaics. <laughs> so well, it'll happen. Mr. City Manager Levin. Uh, one thing that we could do to try and help clarify things is do um, a search in the previous meeting minutes, make sure that we get the motions, make sure that we have everything properly approved. <coughs> and also uh, one thing that we could potentially do for the concerns with the maintenance is get a maintenance agreement to Quick make sure that that's covered. And with my suggestion to the city managers, do a quick maintenance agreement. And how long does that enter? As long as you want it. Right, what's the feeling of the board? I would postpone this until she can obtain the rest of the information and a, a, an agreement Maintenance. to the next meeting or whenever. Do I have a second? Support. Support. Motion and support. Roll call vote on this, unless there's any more discussion. This is a motion just to table it. Table it. So this isn't a substantive motion. No. It's just to table it. You're not voting yes or no on the project. Right. You're just voting to table. just to table it. Ready? Yes. Commissioner Callahan. Yes. Commissioner Clausen. Yes. Commissioner Lovely. No. Commissioner Turner. No. Mayor Vandenbosch. Yes. Commissioner Avery. No. Commissioner Hendricks. Yes. What do you want from me? We, the, the attorney time. will be the attorney will be putting together a maintenance contract agreement. Agreement. I just need to know what entity with, and that's it. I'll get. I'll ask you after. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. 
moving on to startup school overview. Matt Brooks. Good luck. The city's history on maintenance. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, <coughs> commissioners, city attorney, manager. This is humorous. And clerk. And treasurer. Thank you for the uh, audience tonight. We appreciate the opportunity to talk with you. Uh, before I start, I, I should, uh, I can't help but saying that in three weeks, my eldest son will uh, head off to the, uh, to the Navy to serve this country. And I sat here for the last 10 minutes hoping that he winds up deployed at a place where the most contentious issue is what to do with the park. <laughs> so just, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not downplaying anything, but life is pretty good, you know? Uh, life is good. Let's argue about parks, baby. It's good. My name is Matt Brooks. Shannon Schwabi is to my immediate left. Uh, we're here to talk about, uh, on behalf of Blue Water Startups and Entrepreneurs, uh, we are on the leadership team for a group of entrepreneurs that uh, formed a group to serve and support, network with, meet, cheerlead for entrepreneurs throughout the Blue Water area. We think, that, we think of that as Algonac up to Lexington. And for the past several years, we've been doing social events and uh, learning opportunities. Uh, and uh, last year, we did the first of what we called a startup school, uh, which was, look, entrepreneurs have a short time frame. School for entrepreneurs is one day long. <laughs> so it was a one day conference we held up in Port Huron last fall. And uh, the second annual, uh, we like to move our meetings around, so the second annual happened right here in Marine City last, uh, last month, a month ago almost to the date. And uh, it, uh, it was a success by, by just every measure. Uh, we were able to bring over 150, 160 or so people to this great city from all over the place, not just our neighbors throughout the Blue Water area, but attendees and speakers from throughout uh, Southeast Michigan, from Indiana, a speaker all the way from California as well, to come into this little town and talk about the excitement of, of entrepreneurship. And it was an awesome event. Again, a full day event that happened here in, in, uh, in Marine City. The uh, seminar featured successful entrepreneurs from the region, uh, say other states as well. Attendees arrived through, from throughout Southeast Michigan, several staying overnight at the uh, new hotel in town. Um, I wish to commend the city, the city as a whole uh, for being an ideal host city for this annual event. Had it not already been in the, in the charter of our group to move it around every year, I would have uh, uh, succumbed to the, to the arm twisting of the mayor here to just come on back <laughs> next year and make it easy. Uh, local businesses hosted uh, speakers uh, in breakout sessions for the conference within their buildings uh, that include the Mariner, uh, Mariner Theater and others. See what I did there? <laughs> Many of the local restaurants. Thank you. I asked her to occasionally let me know I'm doing a good job. <laughs> uh, many of the local restaurants generously donated food for what we call the Taste of Marine City lunch for these 100 and, 150 so attendees that would include uh, excellent restaurants such as the Little Bar. <laughs> plug, plug. And more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> they were all excellent of course mayor Vandenbosch attended uh, planning sessions thank you very much and addressed the audience during the Saturday event sharing his own story of entrepreneurship and that was awesome uh, above all Erica DeLang from the from the Chamber of Commerce she provided just an immeasurable uh, level of expertise and support and collaboration throughout this process uh, it might seem cliche to say that without her, it wouldn't have happened. It would have happened, it just would have sucked. <laughs> I mean, she's just, she's, I mean, it was just awesome. Uh, whatever Erica gets paid, which is none of my business, but I'd suggest that you triple it and add benefits. She's really, really, really a rock star, I gotta tell you. Uh, as a 1994 graduate of, of Marine City High School, I gotta tell you, it was a real pleasure uh, to bring such an awesome event back to my hometown and um, shine a bright light on the city that I'm so proud of. And so again, we thank you, thank you for your attention. And uh, although we won't be back next year for startup school, we have monthly events throughout the community as well. So we'll be back real soon. Look for uh, the folks in the blue shirts and big smiles. Awesome. Thank you very much. Great. Thank, thank you. you.
Thanks. Appreciate it. I just wanted to say thank you to this group um, helped uh, Friends of City Hall develop their uh, business model for 300 Broadway and Ms. Schwabe in particular was a huge help to us. Thank you. <clears throat> Moving on to the traffic control orders, Chief Heslop. Good evening. Thanks for uh, having me. Um, several months ago, I was at City Hall and was talking to Chris, and she had showed me a traffic control order book that was at City Hall, and we got talking about one of I don't remember which one it was. So then I went over to the DPW, found out that the DPW had a book, and I'm like, there's another book in my office. So <laughs> I combined them all together, and I'm like, are they duplicates? Are they copies, or are they all separate? Well, going through all three of these books, they were all pretty much duplicates, and going through them, I noticed that we were lacking a few. Um, so the one, the first one I've got is this 10B, is a numbered P18-0005 regarding the uh, stop signs in town. So going through the three books, um, we were lacking traffic control orders for the majority of the stop signs in town. So compiling the list over several months, we uh, were lacking 73 of them, so I compiled them all under one. Wow. Or 76 of them, sorry. Um, so if you reference that, 76 of them, I, uh, I, I developed the, just the one traffic control order to uh, cover all 76 stop signs. Do we have to pass these individually? You tell me. No, I'm talking about the <laughs> control orders. Yeah, you, three they need to be done individually? Okay. Yes. The, the three of them? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I was, I was going to do 76 separate ones for you. <laughs> I figured I'd make, it, make your life easy, Mr. Mayor, so I put them under one. <laughs> See, that's why I didn't move you to last. <laughs> Um, and you want to go through all three of them that way we can. Would you like me to? Yeah, and okay. then we'll just pass. We'll the, um, the second one was uh, the recent paving of um, North Bell River uh, between Fairbanks and the North City limits with the recent paving there. Um, there are no signs currently, and again, going through the three books, I couldn't find anything that indicated no stopping, standing, or parking all along that roadway. Um, there would be laws that would govern like a vehicle that would park, and there would be impeding traffic now that there's lines there but I think a traffic control order would help us enforce that. Okay. That's um, P18006. And then the last one would be P18007. Um, that's regarding truck traffic on the streets um, with the recent paving of West Boulevard. Um, Mike Gittrich had come to me and asked me if we could develop something to prohibit trucks from going down there and ruining their new project. So that one is just no truck traffic over 7,000 pounds covering from North Parker up until North Bell River Road. Yes, Mr. Avery. Yeah, I have a question because when, granted it's over now, but the work done on the big bridge, I have seen a lot of trucks come by since that's right by my shop that have to back down and go through there. So is this, maybe there should be permits required, but no big trucks go down through there unless they're lost, and I don't seem to see indications of that. So when they're doing something on business, there is a need for the big truck going through there. Uh, something as simple as our paving, and all those big trucks move through the area. So I don't think we can just blindly shut off big trucks. If you don't mind. That's no, I'm done. We can, well, I was talking to the chief. If as a truck driver, if we're making a <coughs> delivery in the area, we can the they can make a delivery. Well, they just can't drive through. Correct. Fine. I, so I don't see it used as a thoroughfare, but that's yeah. Okay. I, that was it was Mike's concern. Mike and I had a lengthy discussion about it. This was the easiest solution we could have: is no trucks over seven thousand pounds. We're just trying to protect the the new pavement, asphalt, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Yes, ma'am. Um, I know I talked to some of the people that live along there, and they say sometimes some of the big trucks do come down through in there. So that was their concern. Also, there, there are some times that we, you know, we do yeah. see trucks come through that intersection to make their deliveries. You know, to Hungry Howies and you know the other businesses through there. Um, but it's a very rare occasion. This will kind of help help protect that that area. Anybody else have anything else for the chief? Thank you, sir. Oh. Yes. No, I, I, do we make make a motion? Here we have. We're gonna go back. We're gonna. I just wanted to go through it. One the, at a time. Yeah. One at a time. Yep. We'll need a motion for traffic control order, 
P-18-005. So moved. Support. Motion support. Any questions on this one? <coughs> Hearing no one, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Claussen? Yes. Commissioner Lefkowitz? Yes. Commissioner Turner? Yes. Mayor Vandenbosch? Yes. Commissioner Avery? Yes. Commissioner Hendrick? Yes. Commissioner Callahan? Yes. Commissioner Perry? Now to traffic control order P-18-0006. I move the acceptance of P-18-0006. Support. Motion support. Any questions? Hearing <clears throat> none, our uh, roll call vote, please. Uh, Commissioner Lovely? Yes. Commissioner Turner? Yes. 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 Okay, moving on to traffic control order P18-0070. <laughs> Can I get the trifecta? Here you go. Call your. <laughs> I move the acceptance of P18-007. <clears throat> so move. Zero seven. There we go. Any questions on this one? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Yes. 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 Thank you. Yes, sir. Thanks, Chief. <coughs> Moving on to Tetra Tech proposal for municipal survey and boundary analysis. City Manager Levin. Several months ago, I brought before you some information regarding some complaints that I have received since I've been here about some potential encroachment or ownership issues regarding property that may or may not be city property. Uh, I talked to you at the time and got authorization to seek a proposal from our engineering firm to find resolution to these issues. Uh, there are five of these projects that we have a proposal from Tetra Tech and the total that they have projected not to exceed to review all of these is $5,200 and at this point I am just looking for um, a motion to approve this contract to move forward with trying to resolve these property dispute issues. I'll move the approval of the proposal mm -hmm. for municipal survey and boundary analysis. Support. I make a second for that motion. Okay. Any questions or concerns on it? Roll call vote, please. Mayor yes. Avery? Yes. 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 Well, moving on to resolution number 02262018. Approval of board of review meet to meet on alternate days. Date. At the last meeting, I had brought before you a resolution to correct a issue that we had with our assessor. Uh, as you all know, we contract with the county for assessing, and we have property transfers that are brought to our office. The state, through their um, code, has a, a provision that we can charge a late fee for people if they drop it off after the 45 days. Through that resolution, you permitted us to waive those fees for them. This was another resolution that the county is looking for us to pass to correct a deficiency that we have had regarding the dates for our Board of Review. Uh, if you pass this resolution, it in essence would make things consistent with the practice that we've had for meeting with the Board of Review, and it is something that is allowable by state law. Can I get a motion to pass the resolution? I'll make the motion to pass the resolution to adopt approval for March Board of Review to initially meet on an alternative starting date, resolution 026-2018. Support. Motion to support. Any questions on it? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Avery? Yes. Commissioner Yes. Commissioner Yes. Commissioner Yes. Commissioner Yes. Commissioner Yes. 
Yes. Moving on to the TIF uh, board termination issue. City or the city attorney Robert Davis would like to start us out. Yeah, uh, Mr. Mayor, may I take yeah, that podium absolutely. so I can go through this? <clears throat> At the meeting in uh, October, I provided the commission with a rather detailed letter that provided uh, some history of your role in uh, managing TIFA and some fallout from the forum. I tried to answer some of the questions that were raised at the forum in that letter. And I think each of you received a copy of that. I know this is a real important topic, so I, I just want to be um, as in detail as I can with this presentation. Um, some of you have heard it before, some haven't. Back in 1980, when the TIFA law was enacted, some years later, this, not this commission, but the city commission found that the purposes for which TIFA was authorized existed in Marine City. And in order to form a TIFA, without going into the great details in the law, which hasn't changed much uh, since then and is not changing going forward. Um, you, you passed a resolution of intent um, by the city commission. So the process initiated with the city commission, you, you passed a resolution of intent indicating that one or more or all of the purposes of TIFA um, were in existence in Marine City. And, um, and that was some 30 plus years ago. Um, and thereafter, you established at a public hearing the <clears throat> district for which the TIFA would function. And you established a board and gave it the authority as authorized under the law. And then it becomes the role of the board. There's a little bit of a shift um, once you've resolved the purpose, you've resolved to create the authority, you've created the district, and you've established the board, then the board proposes back to you for your decision, development areas and development plans, and then when you've approved those, you develop a taxing plan to fund those development plans. And that's how a TIFA begins. And then throughout the life of the TIFA, there's reporting requirements and audits and yearly submittals to the state and yearly feedback um, from the TIFA board back to you. Nearly two years ago, you asked for research from me concerning um, TIFA in general. You wanted an initial opinion letter that just outlined what is TIFA, what is it all about, make sure we all understand it legally. And that was in 2016. And then when you decided to analyze a process for the termination of TIFA, it was my advice to you not to do that on a sharp line. In other words, it was my advice to wait and let the current development plans mature and run their course. And they all had been rearranged to have a December 15th of 2018 termination date. For us to create a seven step process for <clears throat> um, treasurer to work on the numbers, for us to do accountings, let's have one meeting where we assess where are we on these development plans and the and we asked the TIFA board to give us those updates. One meeting then for the community to hear, well, where do we stand on the accounts? One meeting for us to take a look at what do we owe? What do we have? Do we have enough? What are our fixed obligations? Do we have <coughs> enough to meet our fixed obligations? And we created, if you remember, the seven step process that was gonna run us to the end of December wherein we would then have a taxing plan that had terminated. 
we would have a formula for the return of surplus monies. We would have a ending by its own date of the current development plans. And we would have a resolution to terminate the authority and that would cover what the legal requirements are. The other reason for spreading that out over a decent amount of time was to allow the TIFA board to analyze TIFA, the development areas, and the then pending development plans, and maybe be able to come back to the city commission and say, you know, in whole or in part, in whole or in part, you know, we would like to provide you with a presentation um, to keep TIFA in some form going forward. And that didn't happen right away, so uh, one member of the city commission said at, at a meeting, and, and you all agreed, let's take an eight month time out and let's allow this to, to potentially um, be heard and be brought back to you. Thereafter, I, at your direction, personally met with TIFA representatives and the board at large, and in part, some of whom are in the audience here today, and I cannot tell you how defined I was in those presentations. I think, Mr. Mayor, you were at one. I know the city manager was at more than one on how much detail I provided on what was going to be required of the TIFA board to make a presentation to this commission to show why TIFA should continue in whole or in part. At one meeting, I all but stood up and said, if I were you, this is what I would say. And I basically gave the speech out loud as to what I would say to this commission if I were a member of the TIFA board and I wanted TIFA to continue. The only thing I was lacking when I gave that uh, partial speech was the empirical data and the uh, regional data and the local data to support that argument. And that is the data that we had asked or I had asked that the TIFA board members gather up for you. So in other words, come before the city commission and say, um, we believe that development area in the downtown area has done a great thing and it's over. We believe development area X is part over, but we really believe that this development area should continue for the following empirically supported reasons and provide you with an opportunity to review that. And that has not happened. At least it hasn't happened at any meeting that I've been at. And I've attended four, maybe five sessions where I've laid this program out as to what needed to be done. So when you look at the process of, of the termination, the, the law uh, is, is about as clear as it can be, and it says the following. An authority which has completed the purposes for which it was organized shall, under Michigan law, shall means mandatory, be dissolved by resolution of the governing body. That's you. What we were hoping to hear was that the purposes are not done by a supported presentation. And that's what I asked the TIFA board to present to you on uh, more than a handful of occasions. So where we're at on the process of termination is this, is we had the first three accounting meetings where we balanced out um, through our expert treasurer, Mary Ellen McDonald. Um, we balanced out all of the accounts we took an inventory of what were the fixed obligations of TIFA going forward. We took a look at what the taxing plan was bringing in. We got it to a point where we had sufficient funds to cover the fixed expenses of TIFA going forward. We stopped the taxing plan 
in July, so your taxing plan has already been terminated. <clears throat> and we then created a list of the TIF of payments that would continue to be made. And we're at a point now where we need to um, decide on the distribution of the surplus funds. We need to write a letter to those who will receive in part or in whole uh, their, their monies that are due and we need to get approval, we need to make the distribution, and in your first meeting in December, we need to pass a resolution that would be effective December 15th that would uh, resolve to terminate the authority. When you terminate, <clears throat> you have to go in reverse order. The development plans have to be done, and they self-terminate on December 15th. The taxing plan to support the de development plans has to be terminated, and that's been terminated. Then you have to manage, in accordance with the law, the surplus funding. And then you have to resolve as a body to terminate the authority itself. So there is talk about the new law. So in the, and, and I, that's why in October I provided you with a mirror image of the old law and the new law, and, and it hasn't, it's not changing. But here's what is changing, is the state of Michigan had all these TIFA type laws, I think there was eight of them, that did tax incremental <clears throat> financing. And the state says what we're gonna do in the new law is we're gonna codify them all into one, and then at the end of it, we're going to put in new enforcement and accounting mechanisms. So the TIFA law going forward doesn't take away or give any more than the old law did. But what is happening going forward is that the accounting is becoming more detailed and the enforcement is becoming more detailed. And that applies to all of the eight versions of TIFA programs, not just the one that you're in. So it's a recodification effective in 19. There's nothing new in the, in, the, in the new law. There is no new avenue. There is no change from the old procedure. So if in fact you do if, in fact, TIFA continued, you would be subject to the new 2019 reporting and enforcement requirements. Um, but the, 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 the law itself is not opening up anything new for, for, for your TIFA. So um, that, that's, uh, that's the, new, um, the new law analysis. The city commission took a very deliberate and staged approach on this. And, um, you know, I, I remember when I was writing this rather lengthy process, I was concerned because I know that there was, you know, there was feelings of termination, um, but it was still my opinion that termination was not a good idea on an abrupt line and that we should, we should manage it in accordance with good accounting through the end of December of 18 and let everything come together with the, with the ending of the development plans. I just want to make it clear to you that I did my best, and there are some people in the room who could, could attest to the meetings. I'm, I'm looking at one familiar face right there um, who, who will tell you, I think, that I attended these meetings. I, I, I really told the TIFA board exactly what I thought was required in order to at least come before you. Not that you would accept it, but at least the type of argument that might catch your attention. So right now, with respect to termination, if nothing else happens, we have stopped the taxing plan. The development plan self-expire on the 15th of December. I will be working with Mary Ellen McDonald. We have to get a letter out in the next couple of weeks to all those who might receive some of the surplus funds. We have to kind of get their quasi approval that they agree with the formula we're using. We'll work with the county. 
<coughs> we'll get that ready to go. And then there'll be a resolution, I think would be at your December 6 meeting that would, you would pass a resolution that would be effective December 15th to terminate the authority and that would be the end of TIFA. That's where we're at as I'm speaking. Um, do you have any questions? Because I would really like to answer them if I can. Um, my question is, to continue it, you still have to meet the four conditions, correct? You should have a continuing purpose. Yes. Okay. And that, that was the nature of the conversations um, with TIFA was, um, you know, I, I, think, I think one example, I'll just give you an example, was I, I mentioned that I did my own kind of uh, uh, little look around, uh, maybe in between a, a few stops here and there. Um, and I said, well, is there an area where your commercial development is not going as well as it should be? And maybe there would be a, an argument that could be made that um, as opposed to looking at declining property values, make a presentation to the city commission about vacancies and say, we have all these vacancies. Why do we have these vacancies? Well, we have these vacancies because we don't really attract in commercial development because we don't have this and we don't have that and we don't have that and make a, pre make a presentation about that. That was one of my, my suggestions, but that didn't happen. And my other suggestions were to uh, avail uh, the city records to an analysis of uh, taxing and declining or up, up swinging property values and look for other areas in the community that would meet the purposes of a, of a TIFA. Um, TIFAs are, are put into place for purposes. And that's why the law uses the word when the purposes are completed, when those purposes are completed, then you shall terminate the TIFA. Here this is run for 30 plus years. And the argument could be made that the purposes are completed. We were looking for an argument that the purposes are not completed. Um, but the way it works is the city commission you're kind of in charge. The board submits to you proposed development plans. The board submits to you a proposed taxing plan. But you make the decision. And you make the decision when you believe that the purposes are completed. The attorney general has weighed in. I've given you that in multiple opinion letters. <coughs> the attorney general has indicated that these purposes are important. Yes, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to kind of take these in reverse order. So, uh, new laws coming into 2019. You're referring to Public Act 57 of 2018 that was approved. It's just going to take place in January. Correct. Right. Talks about in there about, well, you, you, you pointed out the facts of accounting and reporting. Could you? Go into a little more detail because based on what we heard from the experts at the uh, meeting that the TIFA board put together, they kind of spelled out the same thing and, and more or less broke it down as to not to say that you're, you're doing anything wrong, but you're trying to make it sound like a scare tactic. And really what they said is it's just a formal reporting process. Half of what they're going to ask for, you're already doing. Yeah, it's 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 it. They they added a few things. They more or less said that once you've updated your plan and submitted it, and you mm -hmm. give them a report of uh, an accounting of the monies. Yeah, it, I'm not. You're I'm there 100 percent. All I all I was trying to call out is that I know that um, earlier presentation was that we should right. we should analyze the new law, and what I'm trying to tell you is the substance of the new law is the same. The only thing they did was they at the back end of all eight of them, right. they said, here's your new reporting requirements, here's your website requirements, here's your annual mm -hmm. synopsis of activities requirements, and by the way, we're going we're gonna to look at these a little closer now, and we're going to enforce them. Right. That's kind of what it says. Yep. And, and it I talks did, uh, about submitting them six months prior to your yep. fiscal year. And I think In a nutshell, it's not a big deal. It's and, and I, and I, half of what we've got is there already. It just needs to be updated. I, I, I think you're right. Okay, so just, that fear 
doesn't need to play into this decision, right? I, I you, did not you would mean, agree? You would agree? I did not mean to present it as a okay. fear. I'm just saying there are increased requirements. Right. You talked about a taxing plan has been terminated. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? The, you stopped collecting the tax. We stopped, stopped, we stopped the, the taxing plan is the plan on how much tax money you're going to capture to right. fund developments. And we, we, we determined in the seven step process that we had enough money already captured to complete the development fixed obligation. So we stopped the taxing plan in July. So that means you've submitted something to the county, to the state? No. To we say don't. that we're no longer capturing? You don't have to. You do don't. That. You don't have to. You, so how is that formally done? You, as a board, ordered, decided to did, stop did, capturing. Did that tax. in April or May? I can't remember which month. And we made it you, effective July. Right. I think it was effective July. Mm -hmm. All, so it, all it means, Jim. Essentially, it, when you say terminated, what you mean is you suspended we, the capture until the stopped. plan is terminated. Yeah, we stopped. Yeah. Right. Okay. And, and so it, it's and not terminated is the wrong word to use. You've suspended uh, capture until. No, you you actually stopped it. Terminated. I didn't. In other. Well, the board did by t authorizing through a resolution, no longer do we capture any right. money. So when you did that, that technically so terminated. Step by step, what did you do at that point in time? I, and when July tax bills went out, no longer do I capture any money and hold it aside for the TIFA plans. Okay. It goes all directly to the taxing jurisdiction. The county gets their full portion okay. for those bills. All right. The city does and the college does. So you stop capture, mm -hmm. which is what I was trying to say. Okay. Yeah, Jim, in the in the in the layest of terms, it just we stopped collecting money to I fund. don't speak good legally. So I know, I know. And I the, the law uses the word terminate. Right. We stopped capturing the money because we did the three accounting steps before that that showed we had enough money to meet the obligations. Okay. Can I ask a couple more? Absolutely. Thank you. So you, you told us the two reasons that you recommend, well, let me put it this way, your words, city manager directed by this, I'm sorry, the city commission directed by the city manager and or city attorney voted by majority to, to move forward with the termination on 12-15. It was based on two premises, uh, the governing body, city commission, in this case, may abolish the plan when it finds that the stated purpose for which it was established are accomplished, right? <clears throat> Those may not be your exact words, but a summation of what you said. That's good. Okay, so you agree to that. So I guess I'm still stuck with the question. You're, you're telling the TIFA as an advisory to the city commission who owns the plan, it's their obligation to submit evidence that it's not been met, right? In other words, when we when, own the plan, we go on their advice because they manage the plan for us. When, and it's up to them to tell us whether or not the goals have been met for the when, past 30 years. When, when it, if, you, if you look at it from the beginning, when you first start, you, know, you, you, you set up the authority, you set up the district, you establish yep. a board. <clears throat> yep. It could, Jim, under, under, when you started one of these, nothing could happen for a while. You could just have an authority in place. Right. And then your board says, you know what, we'd like to do the following 10 things in development area A. Let's ask the city commission if that's a plan that the city commission would like to do. Okay. And if the city commission approves that plan, then there has to be a taxing plan to fund that plan and then the city commission would have to approve the taxing plan. Okay. So right now the city commission here has indicated by a vote that they believe TIFA should terminate. Based on the authority of the city attorney and the city manager. Absolutely. Well, based well, on well, the vote. All right, so let me say, well, 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 hang, 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 no, 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 hang, hang on a second, because okay. I, I, you know, let, 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 let's, let's be clear and frank here. Awesome. I gave you opinion letters that were nothing more than the law, and you're turning me into an advocate, which no. I have not been. No, this is all. I would based, say, I would say to you, and I would say, to, the city and I would say to 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 Miss Lepley, I've been more of an advocate oh, with the TIFA board trying to tell them what to do 
than I have been. No an argument advocate. there. You've been in, you've been advising both boards on what what the proper steps are. Right. You've done a great job of that. Right. My question back to the city commission is: first of all, let's be frank. I have a copy of the plan. I have all three districts right here. Yep. I'd like to ask my fellow board members: Have you all reviewed this plan? I got two, three shaking their heads. No. You understand? You understand completely what's in here, and you agree that everything in here has been met. If we're going to ask, <clears throat> since I was being looked at, uh, no, we did not discuss whether the plan had been met. We voted whether we wanted to terminate. Right. Thank Based you. Based on whose advice? Well, the advice was just following the law, and I understand that part. We listened to that, and unless there was more coming up, we followed the law. But we, but you, you had you had a little more wisdom than that. You staged it out over time with an indication that you were receptive to hearing presentations yeah. on whether or not. The purposes were completed and you heard none well my point is not once did a copy of these plans come in front of us i pulled this off the they were in my first memo the complete plans oh they were mm -hmm. all in the exhibits and they were put on the website i must have been having a senior moment no no you there, i was question. i may have you on that one <laughs> um but there was a series uh, in the first memo uh, or the second memo we we we, we retraced the entire history from your intent all the way through your plans, your amended plans, because we came up with every line item in every plan, remember? And then we sat here laboriously at a meeting and we went through, was that done? Was that done? Was that done? And we checkmarked all of them. Okay. <clears throat> and the second premise here is that it, it was tip of board as an authority, as a uh, advisory, to, to the city commission who owns the plan. It was, on, it was on them to come up with recommendations, and they didn't. Therefore, we're terminating, correct? I think you decided to terminate. I didn't. Or, no, I'm sorry. The board. The, 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 the city commission decided to terminate, but left open the opportunity to hear presentations to the contract. Okay. Um, I was on the subcommittee also, and you gave out the information. And these plans have been available for 30 years. I've read them for the last 20 years. Um, They're on your website, I think. Yeah, I mean, they've been out there forever. Um, but I think the problem is, is what was, explain to everybody again what the original intent of the TIFA was <clears throat> to do. Well, you're, you're, by, by state law, um, the, the purposes of, of any TIFA are laid out at the beginning um, you, you, you know, you have to have a finding somewhere in the 80s, this city commission, not you, had to find um, that conditions were in existence that needed TIFA assistance. And you, 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 you had to have a finding um, that it was in, the, in your interest at the time to halt the decline in, in property values. So you had to have a a declining base of property values and then later the attorney general said it couldn't just be one it had to be a systematic problem in a in a defined area um, you wanted to increase the property tax valuation of those districts so you wanted to infuse some sort of development program some sort of development plan to raise the taxable values because that's where your incremental capture would come from and you wanted to eliminate the causes of the decline of the property values. So not only did you have to have these property values, but you wanted to develop a plan, which I think you did, by the way. I, you know, the, believe me, I think you guys did a great job with TIFA. You, you had to have a plan that would address the causes of why these declines, and, and, and I think you did. I think, uh, I think you worked some magic on your, your one area on the, on, the, on the waterfront. I think uh, it's, it's, it's fantastic results. Um, and then you, you, you wanted all of that to promote overall growth in the community. 
So the AG chimes in and he says, so when, when, those, when those purposes are no longer in existence, then you follow the law because the law is, <clears throat> is, is rather harsh, but it's rather unequivocal, and it, and, it, and, it, and it comes out and it says, an authority, you, which has completed the purposes, shall be dissolved. I mean that's and and so when, when you when you were looking at this, it was my understanding that you believed that the purposes were were done. And and when we were in the subcommittee meeting, I remember we all talked about each of the three districts, and one was downtown, and everybody was in agreement that that downtown district is booming. So therefore, what is there to do? You can and 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 then we went into the other two areas, and I know right now houses are selling. At above their asking price in a lot of cases. They're selling within a day or so in a lot of cases. These areas have totally improved. So the point is, unless we can show that we still have areas that are depressed, we that's, can't, we've done it. It's that, done. That's what you asked. Mm -hmm. Right. But it can't be based on just because you want to keep the money and continue to do projects. Mrs. Lovett. No, um, and uh, there's a couple of things, and, and you and I have talked about this before, and, and uh, you may not believe that you're functioning as an advocate, but you did, and I'll tell you part of that is, as a professional, sometimes we don't realize uh, that for a layperson, uh, your presentations in the eight months didn't even make a dent. They did not get that the other thing was well, who, uh, when who, we, did, who, who didn't get it excuse me it's my turn to talk no, I just when we did get to that vote there were members of the TIFA board that came in here with a plan to be presented and they were not allowed to speak they asked if they could speak and they were not allowed to speak the other thing at that meeting and you were sitting there we had a question called plus there was a motion on the floor and we only voted once we don't even know which one we voted for so there was a procedural error there that was not dealt with. And the other thing is, the bottom line is here, because all of, the, all of this legalese is, what's best for the city of Marine City going forward? Can we rescind and go forward? Yes, we can. What's best for the city of Marine City is simple math. Are we better off having this money coming in and working on a plan on ways to go forward with it and learning as we go. Because remember now, every member of that TIFA board is a volunteer. Agreed. And, and none of them have professional training. They really didn't know what was happening. And when I first came on the board and we first had these in closed session, they didn't even know it was happening. And I had to push to have a member of the TIFA board come to our closed session meetings. It should have been, and, and, and you know, here's some of the questions uh, that Mr. Starin asked uh, uh, of me. Were there specific public hearings held on the dissolution of your TIFA before that vote was taken? No. Were those most impacted by these decisions, business owners and TIFA districts, individual taxpayers, et cetera, involved in this decision? No. Has the question, what is best for the city of Marine City and for its citizens going forward, been publicly and exhaustively discussed? No. This may be clear in your mind, but it is not clear going down. There is no trickle down going on here. That's why Mr. Steran recommended that we hold a public forum. And, it, and we all learned a lot. One of the things that we never knew was that in each of the defined TIFA districts, you can use TIFA money for the services provided in those districts. You can pay for police services, fire services, snow removal, all of all that stuff. We did not know any of this. There's so much education that we need to go through that this is an, an ignorant and closed-minded decision. And, and it was in many people's minds, the way you presented it, we had no options. And, and the other thing, again, uh, these plans were in place and were not allowed to be presented. And it is very important that we also look at, and this is why I felt like I was living in two words, because I would go to the SEMCO meetings, I would talk to the people there, and they'd go, 
what are you kidding? Nobody in their right mind would ever voluntarily give up a TIF, you know. And what we were ignoring and are still ignoring is the established precedence and procedure by the state on how they're dealing with other TIFs. They have been bending, bending, bending because for the, from the state side of it, this works for them. Uh, so they want it to continue. And the other thing is, we don't know if we applied, if we could be approved. We don't know what we're dealing with here. If we applied to the state and say, this is here we are, and this is what we're doing, can we have an extension? And then they said, no, okay, game over. But if they say yes, then we have this money continuing to be available to us, new products coming up, and we could be working on all this. Instead, we're looking at the letter of a law from 1980 that has never been followed by the state. Right. And the last time, when, you know, when we wanted to do something with TIFA funds, and in that, at that point in time, it was using it for City Hall and, and, and the restoration, that city manager had a representative from the state treasury department in his office within two weeks. And he sat down and explained to us how and why we could use that money. And we were able to do that and to go forward. And people are still getting accused of, of not doing that properly. Uh, this is an established precedence. The state wants this to work. Why are we, the only ones that I know of, being forced to go to the letter of the original law when we have all of these years of established precedent? And, no, and, and you know, that just makes no sense to me. But the bottom line is, uh, for me, and, and I think there's some people here that have some presentations to make on this too, what is best for the city of Marine City going forward? To continue <clears throat> to capture TIFA funds, to have those available, to be able to have projects and to continue to move through this as we learn and do things better and get in line with the, the new law and the way it's coming in, or to just throw it all away and, and lose all this money and then ask the citizens of Marine City for a millage. Give me a break. We are giving away five hundred thousand dollars. Whoa, 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 where, whoa, whoa, about, whoa, whoa. Stop, it, it, stop. Now this is long term. Five thousand a year. I, I understand. You can put in the, the absolute correct figures and how long it would play out, but it does not take remember now, TIFA is not about spending money, it's about investing money. Right. And if you include the return on those investments going long term, and remember in our in our city plan. The TIF is in place till 2029. That plan is already in our long-term it plan. Is. It's already there. Uh, if you go that way, yes, you do get up to that amount with no problem. And, and that's, that's just math. But then you're going to ask these people to support a millage. I mean, to me, it's simple math. OK, you have this money. You get this money. Now you don't. And nobody told you you had to do that, but the way you presented it. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me clarify that. Uh, first of all, I think the treasurer can give us the figures. Of how much we <coughs> capture a year? Of what we would lose by not having TIFA per year. Okay. If we were to lose TIFA, county and college portion would be 56000 which is about 2% of the general operating revenue. So that's how much... Okay, the, the, the second thing is, is, uh, is and, and I remember standing at this podium when uh, you, were, you were interviewing attorneys, and I told you when I was interviewing that when you ask me a question, I'm gonna give you the legal answer. I'm not your policymaker, and I'm not your voting board. I have given you what the law says. I cannot change the language of what the statute says about termination. You can analyze whether the state enforces it. You know, you can analyze whether uh, they, you know, you can go 100 on I-94 because they generally don't pull you over. I'll just tell you what the speeding limit is. You do what you want from, from thereafter. But you asked me to give you legal opinions, and that's what I gave you. And again, under circumstances now, if you have somebody in your car that's bleeding to death, you go 100 miles an hour. Maybe. You know, that, or not, however you no. can control Not if I'm going to hurt someone that, else. That's, you know. No, I understand. I understand. But what, I, what I'm telling you is that. 
if you look at if you look at the information I provided you, um, I mean, you say I'm I'm advocating. I I think I've advocated harder with the TIFA folks than I did uh, to terminate TIFA. And some of them are here, and and there is things moving in the works uh, that are moving that direction. They I told me they that every given, time. Given that a chance, well, they never got to speak to us. <laughs> they will when everyone's done questioning the I already talked to your chairman <clears throat> thank you um, <clears throat> even the other attorney said and the other gentleman that was there Mr. Casey said that other communities have closed out TIFA because they serve their purpose and he named no, he them. said they didn't know he named them um, I talked to both Mr. Casey and to Mr. Stern, so I, I yes. know exactly what they're thinking. Yes. And all the information that was given was given to the TIFA board. Um, I sat in the other meeting with the TIFA board. Everything was explained. This thing didn't prop up overnight. They've had a year to come up with, and, we've, and he's told them several times, factual data. We can't just go by, well, we want to keep this amount because we want to do this project. You have to have factual data to show that the area is still depressed and is not done. He's tried to tell you. You had four conditions. He gave you the four conditions. I even had people that contact me that I didn't even know, and I advised them to go out and read the opinions that we've posted online, and after they read it, they came back and they said, yeah, they're done. They agreed. So well, I think what happened was after I did my opinion letters, you voted to release the attorney-client privilege immediately and allow mm -hmm. TIFA to have all the opinion letters. Yeah. And you posted them on a website. Yes, Mary Ellen. I just have a question for Commissioner Lovely. Um, you mentioned that some of the TIFA board members came to the city commission and wanted to present a plan. Yes. Okay. Before they can do that, <clears throat> It would have to be approved by the TIFA board before they could even approach you on that. So just if a few, you know, so this would have, have to have been done in a meeting format where they would have approved it. I understand. But my knowledge, I don't think I understand. they've ever done well, that. First of all, when it comes to doing a new plan, okay, um, you, you bring the county in and they can deny it. And it's an expensive proposition and it has to be instituted by the city commission not by the TIFA. What they came in with was what they wanted to present, and I don't mean to speak for them because they, they can go through this, was some ideas on how to do this and to go forward, and they were not allowed to speak. It's not that they had a finished plan at that point, but uh, that, again, would have to be approved by us because it costs money uh, to do a plan, and you have to have professionals come in to redo that plan. And other TIFAs and other tax capture boards are not doing new plans because if, if you do new a plan, you have to go through all this process, and it's expensive. They've been working through addendums. Uh, and one of those that you can look at if you want to, and you can talk to the people in Warren, is they totally did all the infrastructure for the Van Dyke Corridor. Now, that wasn't in their original plan, but they were able to uh, do addendums uh, to bring that about. And they worked together. And I think this is one of the things. How did we get to the place where this has become adversarial? Why haven't, I mean, the TIFA board has done everything they were asked to do and included them and funded things from the city when they were asked to do it. And we should have been working together with the Planning Commission, and I think that's what Joe's talking about. Should be the Planning Commission, the TIFA board, and representation of this board should be working together. And, and that has not happened. Instead, it's become adversarial. Well, I know in the past, and everybody knows I've been here, in fact, I've yes, been here when they all started in 1980, <laughs> and, and I'm sure the law hasn't changed, is you can amend those plans, and it's not an expensive Right, what that's what I said, working by amendments and addendums, plan. yes. And you can amend them, you do public notices, you know, you notify the county, and there's yeah. public notices involved. That's all that's involved. But the TIFA board has to come up with these ideas. They have, have a wish list and it was presented. Of what the estimated cost is <clears throat> and when they, they, they have all that. When they, well, why didn't they ever 
Uh, Not did. once have I been approached to put this on the agenda. Jim, you've asked for things on the agenda. I put it on the agenda every time. I never say no. And I appreciate it. And the TIFA board not once, and if I'm ever told that I wouldn't let them speak, it's because they didn't get on the agenda. All they had to do was come to the city manager and say, put this on the agenda, and then you're on the agenda. Do I have, and city manager will concur, I do not not let anybody on the agenda unless you come after the deadline. But then the deadline, be, nobody gets on. But it still would have to be approved at the TIFA right. board first, you know. Right. And then come, then those representatives could come. Absolutely. And it's been done in the past. We've done this numerous mm -hmm. times over the years. I'm, I'm glad to hear that you've been around this whole time. And the fact is, the last time it was amended was 2007. I, I right? will tell you, Jim. Correct? I'm Am I correct? Yeah. Anybody on the TIFA board? currently that was there in 2007? Anybody on this city commission currently was there in 2007? No. <clears throat> all, all new people. They didn't realize perhaps that this was that big of a deal, that important. Um, I'm, I perhaps. I sat down with several of the TIPA board members. I think if they during did budget, know that, they would have done something. budgets and Chuck can, the last time, and I kept telling them, You've got to change, you know, amend your development plan. I've told them. We had that April 5th. And has it been in front of your board? Has your board approved it? And why didn't you bring it to us? They did. No, you didn't. How do you try when, you, when my door is open? Mr. Rutley came to the podium. I asked if, now I asked a question. Was he a representative of the board? And he said, no, I'm a and I asked that question. Did you say you were a representative of the board? No, I was here to speak on it. And he was teased. All right, so Mary Ellen McDonald is correct. The law does say development areas and development plans can be amended as long as you go back to the original requirements. So what I was saying earlier is the way it feeds is the <clears throat> TIFA board would say, let's do something different. They bring it to you. You have to follow the same process you followed when you first set up the TIF, you got to have a hearing. You got to let the folks know the impacted area. People know about the plan amendment, and then you decide. You decide if you're going to amend. Amend. I just want to want to ask you one question. At this, are you point, done yelling at me? No, I, I, I wasn't <laughs> yelling Perhaps. at you. And listen, you, as, like you all, as you all bit. know, I've been going through some some. Maybe uh, you earned it. I know, and I'm glad you're. I'm glad you're here. Difficult health concerns, I'm glad you're here. and I had to postpone a life-saving treatment to be here tonight right, because well, this is important to me and I'm trying to do everything I can. I understand. But the question is at this point in time, it, with all of this that has gone on, can we rescind that and, uh, and apply to the state for an extension? Can we do that? Can we? Can you, can you rescind do? the termination and apply for an extension? Can the law, we do the, that? Your, the procedure allows for a motion to rescind. We, of course. We, we could do that. that. That's all I think we need to know at this point. And, and then it's looking at going, it's not about who said what or misunderstood this or I didn't get to speak. You know, that's all in the past. Going forward, the best thing for Marine City is to apply, in my opinion, is to apply for an extension and begin to work together the way we should have in the past. Absolutely. And, and you know, my, my experience of, of Marine City, and I came here in 1988, is that they equate winning with being right. And they often treat city government like reality TV or a football game. And instead of problem solving and working together with their boards, uh, there is this whole kind of tug of war that develops. And it, it hurts all of us to do that. And I really think, uh, and again, you may think that you were clear, but let me tell you, uh, as a well, layperson, hey, hang on a second. You're not. Was sir, was I clear when I met with you about what I wanted you? Okay, to do? that's. Okay, um, I'll answer that. <laughs> okay, all right. Just rhetorical. I met Mr. Davis one time at one tip of meeting. One. Second time was in the city manager's office, and he was clear that was in August, July or August. Um, the one that you had missed, Mr. Mayor, mm -hmm. you wanted to meet with you, city manager. Um, <clears throat> that's the only time I've met 
outside of meeting and here you know, talking to Mr. Dean. Mm -hmm. I've had two, but I, I am the newest member on the tip of board. I haven't been around as long as these other guys. <coughs> but um, I've met him twice. Stay there. And he was very clear the second time. All right, we got two questions, Jim and then Lisa. Okay, so uh, you answered Commissioner Lapley's first question that if this board makes a motion to resend or am amend the previous motion, um, it's possible to do that. We know there's a desire from the TIFA board to present new uh, advisory information for the plan. Granted, they got scolded tonight for not following proper procedure, but there's a desire. There's a desire by members of this board and perhaps the new incoming board to again keep this thing going and work together, not against each other, work together. Your opinion, can that be done? You, as a board, you, you can make your motions to rescind prior actions. Right, absolutely. The law says that you shouldn't do that if action on the prior motion has already been initiated. Then there's prior decisions on that that say if the prior action that's been initiated can be addressed, then a motion to rescind is still allowed. Well, the action so, was, so the the action question, was your timetable. Your, your question would really be to uh, your treasurer, we could reinstate the taxing plan. Is that, we terminated it, we could start it up. As long yeah. as there's enough funds still left right. from right. the summer tax bills. Right. I can't say that. Well, you, you presented the numbers. There obviously is there's a but surplus of funds. But what I'm saying is, you know, the collection period for the summer tax <coughs> bill is already okay. done and gone. Yeah, Mr. Yes, Turner. Yes, I'm still collecting. Yeah. And but the action, Robert, the action. Robert's Rules of Order gives the, the absurd example. It says, yeah, don't, I, I don't make, a, in the don't make a motion to amend mm -hmm. uh, the granting of painting of the garage when the garage is no. open and painted. Amending the action, right? The action in this case was your timetable. And, and the action taken on my timetable was the termination of the right. tax. Based on your timetable. Right. It says that. Okay. Lisa. <coughs> okay, what I still see here is the failure that people still don't understand what he's telling you. The areas are booming. If they were still depressed, you could continue it on, and you could still put your projects in, and you could still continue it but the areas aren't depressed, they haven't shown. And that's exactly what he asked you. I was at the same meeting, Chuck. He asked you <coughs> to show with statistical data how were those areas doing. So that's what you guys had to go out and do. Look at the assessments, look at the houses, look to see how they were doing. We have asked for that numerous times. He's told everybody numerous times. We've been told several times we're gonna get a package, we're gonna get data. Um, I know on this agenda, uh, I listened to your last TIFA meeting. You guys were told 10 days before this meeting to get, a, get us the data and get it in here. It's not in here. So even though you have all these great ideas and even though maybe they are good ideas to continue, the problem is the districts are done. You can't show that there are depressed districts that you, you can go in there and you're gonna do anything with. That's the problem with the law. You don't meet the four criteria. That's what he was asking you to do. Yeah. There are, no, there are no TIFA police and the state is not coming after us for this and they are allowing people to continue with their TIFAs to the benefit of the state and to the municipality. And I do wanna defend my, my $500,000 figure. If we go forward to 2029, as it is in our plan, at $56,000 a year, uh, that's 10 years and it's $556,000 that we're throwing away. So I just wanted to defend that figure. I didn't just, just pull it out of the air. The other thing is uh, the TIFAs now are not just for depressed areas, but for the benefit of the continuing uh, going forward of those areas Th this is what we want it is to our it's to putting everything else aside i believe it is to the benefit of the citizens of marine city if we continue our tiffas and 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 work together mr clausen <clears throat> well i i went to the forum that they had with uh, the the tip board put out <clears throat> and there were several questions that were asked and uh, we're trying to uh, do our roads and get it done. And uh, 
um, one of the questions was, can we pave our roads with TIPA money? And the TIPA, and the attorney, and the, the uh, county, and the state all said, no, it has to be in the TIPA district. If it's not in a TIPA district, you can't use that money to pave roads. So right. uh, I, 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 we're going to have money from TIPA to pave roads. We're trying to get a millage, and then we get, well, we can do it with with TIFA, well, the meeting I went to, you can't. That, that wasn't true. No. You mm -hmm. can do it in the TIFA district, and you can do it if you can demonstrate the connecting roads between the TIFA districts. But there you happens can, to be 23 of them. Yeah, so that you can't no, do that. Intersections. Can we all stay on? You I've been do. trying to call on people in order. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Avery. At that meeting, it was brought up that You may not, and he wasn't sure, may not be able to use it for the paving. But he said, you can use the TIFA funds for other things in those districts that frees up general funds that are then used for the roads. So it's a case of you've got money in both pockets, you shift some back and forth. It is a benefit to have the extra money. And if the goal of TIFA was established to establish growth, if you stop establish, what is that to a body? It's stagnation and death. We have no accounting that shows that, okay, there is nothing more that could possibly be done in any of our zones to make growth. Therefore, we can continue to establish growth. Thank you. Lisa. Okay. So in the one TIFA, and I know Mary Ellen remembers, we did the roads, they did the sidewalks, all in that one TIFA, those were all done. Um, one thing you have to do too is um, you will have the extra money even if you shut this down because you're only losing 2%. So the money is still going to go back into our general fund, it's just not going to go into the TIFA fund. And they also said at that meeting that you couldn't spend outside of the TIFA districts, even though some people spent 750000 outside the district on 300 Broadway. <coughs> so. <laughs> You can twist it and spin it any way you want, but until you come up with the, the statistical <clears throat> data to show the four conditions can be met to keep it, you can't keep it. Jim, you need your hand up. Sure. I thought it was interesting at that same meeting. Let me find the fact here. Hang on one sec. Take somebody else, I'll come back. Okay. Someone else that wants to speak. Uh, I was going to say not, not, uh, that doesn't take into account the contractual obligations that money's going to go where it was going to go any. <clears throat> you found your spot. Mr. May, do you want to get up and present your guys' presentation? <clears throat> Are you going to politic or just check in? <laughs> well, we can make it longer. No, thanks tonight for letting me. We can let fill a bus to this one, I guess. Um, to address spending outside of the TIFA, uh, we were told by the Department of Treasury, the state of Michigan, that we were allowed to spend outside the state or outside the TIFA's area district, provided we could show direct impact in those TIFA districts. So, definitely connecting roads you're traveling to the TIF district, you're not gonna go over crumbling roads. You want those roads to be nice and neat as you direct people to those districts. Um, also, part of our mission is economic development. You speak of um, property selling within a couple days. If you look at the handouts that I presented, um, I think it's about the third page, average days of 
uh, houses, properties on the market. This is in Marine City. You can see that as of January 2018, the average was 700 days. So two days, three days. That might be everywhere else in the country as an average, but in city, uh, Marine City, no, it's definitely not. Currently, there are 14 commercial properties for sale. One of them being um, 439 Parker, which is in TIFA 3. Originally asking price 295,000, sat on the market for three years, reduced by $100,000. So it's now selling for 195,000. Still no bidders, still no interest in it at all. That's gonna go farther and farther down market price as it sits. Do you know the initial SEV? The, so we can actually gauge if it's going uh, up or down. I looked it up. Especially I want to see SEV was around 55000 So it's still at double. It's still double, yeah. Double of the double. Yeah. But still, revenue loss. 100% increase isn't bad. I'll take that. But that's looking at the decrease. Remember, we just came through the Great Recession. Everybody's property value went down. At this <laughs> point in time, we're just barely getting back to where we started from. Is that an increase? No, it's not an increase. That's just getting back to where we started. Could I just make one point? Yeah. Three, three houses in my neighborhood mm -hmm. have sold within a day, all overpriced over the asking price in bidding wars. Okay. Three of them. Okay. So I've got I think the I think it, it was like that for a while, mm -hmm. but this last year or so, the housing market has gone. My neighbor on here in <clears throat> Lane has had his house up now for, <clears throat> I want to say, about four months. Not one person came to look at it yet. That might depend on the property, too. But um, According to the real estate agent, or uh, uh, the real estate broker that we spoke to, there's supposed to be a hot demand for condos right now. But these, and these were the last six months. These okay, well, these obviously, they're above the average in, in, in Marine City. So... Do you feel that uh, Tiffa District 2 is seeing the same kind of growth? <coughs> no, I would say not. No? Because so it's based, close, Tif Tif close 2 is basically the Kmart, little development. The, the Kmart Plaza. Right. And there's still a number of vacancies in that plaza. Um, that parking lot's getting busted up. Yep. Um, you see a decline. I mean, VGs, every time I go there, it seems like less and less people are going into it. Same thing with the Kmart, <coughs> same thing with all the stores inside that plaza. What's the response by that property owner, though, when you guys have talked to him? We have tried to talk to him. We get no response whatsoever. I have talked to him. Mm -hmm. He is not interested in the TIFA money. Okay. <clears throat> I don't see how well, we can have a TIFA district on a single property like that. The either. one thing, if we the keep the TIFA plan. alive with the new law, we are able to move the districts. That's one thing we need to look into. We can't look into it if we close up the TIFA. But you still have to have the four conditions to meet. To you expand. can move the district under the old law. It's the same wording. Yeah. Nothing's okay. changed. Okay. But then the county would have to approve that. The county well. would have to approve it. And they it. could decline because, you know, they're in a situation yeah. they want to with, move it. you know, their expenses and revenues and all that kind of stuff. Speak so they could decline it. At our forum, I spoke with Dan Casey, and he was saying that a lot of times the county... They, they may back out of it, they might not. What you have to do is get them early into the plan or into the planning process with us. You have a good chance of them still helping out the TIFA if you can show it benefits them directly as much as it benefits the city. So there's still, ha it's not a done deal where the county's gone forever. Mm -hmm. You can, they'll be able to still contribute. The fight uh, that seems to be going on here between TIFA and the uh, City Council, yes, we may have dropped the ball uh, when it comes to making any new plans. Um, we have three plans that are already in place to 29. We, yes, we need to amend them. Yes, we probably could have. But my question to you guys is sitting here, what have you done to help us? You give us an attorney that gave us a list of things to do, and I gotta speak for myself. I, um, I didn't know 
exactly what you guys wanted. I left for six months after getting that, then I came back um, to the committee because it was not uh, filled, my vacancy. And uh, so with that, we weren't sure. I met with him, uh, Mr. Davis in, I think it was the end of July and um, maybe the first part of August. And we decided to have a meeting with the mayor, the city manager, and him to find out what we could do. And um, he was very clear as you spoke to that. We put together this uh, forum so we could learn. Unfortunately, it was a little too late. We didn't get it till September, August 18th or September 18th? Was September. September 18th. So it may have been in August when we had that meeting. Yeah. Um, we learned a lot, at least I did. I can't speak for everybody, but I think we all learned a lot. I think that you guys learned a lot and heard a lot. I think that we need to get the planning commission involved, the city commissioners involved, and the TIFA people. I, you know, they, they made a very clear point. You can put this TIFA on a shelf and let it sit there, and when you need it, then pull it down and use it. Now, I'm not sure exactly how that works, but I'm telling you, this millage that you guys want, and I'm, and I'm for it, I'm not against it. But the people historically in this town does not pass village, uh, millage. So I'm, I'm concerned. You, and once this is done, it's over. We all know that. So what I'm asking you guys is to put a team together, come together. We have a ferry that isn't here no more. Your business is downtown, lost 20 to 30% from what they're saying. Business is down. I don't know. I don't have my business there. I drive around. Uh, you got St. Clair that is booming up there with a new hotel, $35 million project, eight miles down the road. I'm concerned for the future of Marine City. We might be booming now. What happens? We may even grow, get better or we may decline. Who knows? We don't know the future. We need to plan for the future. We need to look at this, put a committee together, and if it doesn't work, what are we out? What are we out? Nothing. So please keep that in mind and thank you so much. One thing at the, at the forum too, I'd like to mention, John Stern did uh, mention to us, or he may have even said it in the forum, that it, it was never really up to the TIFA board to come up with all the plans. It's actually the commission that does it. We just implement the plan, make sure it gets followed through. So the board here is constantly asking us to come up with the plan. We've had a plan, we need to change the plan but it's up to the board. Mr. Mayor, the, the, the problem with that is that the board voted that the purposes were completed and they, they weren't coming up with a new plan. <coughs> so the indication was, was if you think they're wrong, submit a plan to tell them they're wrong. Okay, and they tied our hands up. Yeah. They tied our hands How did we tie April hands? 5th, our hands got tied. No, they didn't. You had eight months before that to, to give us a plan. And they came up with the plan. They presented it. They did not present us a plan. It's your opinion. It, it wasn't at the meeting. Okay. I got the wish list in my packet. But that's not what we were asking for. I guess maybe, that, maybe we need to clarify that. We weren't asking you to upgrade that plan. We were asking you for the data to prove that the, the districts still needed to be there. You understand what I'm saying? Still yeah, goal. and and that's what you had to give to us. I don't care about the plans. I knew about the plans, and I knew they had to be updated. We need well, statistical data to show that the plans still need to exist. That's what you didn't give us. Okay. Well, tonight I presented some of the uh, 14 commercial properties up for sale, amount of 700 days on the market. Um, there are numerous in TIFA three here. There are numerous properties up for rent that are totally being underutilized. Um, a case in point where the, um, where the tanning salon is, I believe there's four suites there. Three of them are up, still for, open. Uh, directly across the street from there next to the marathon, and at the, I think it's part of the orthodontist or dentist that's there, 
that's been vacant for at least a couple of years or a year, as much as I know of. So there's, look around. The data's there. I mean, it's... But we can't just go to the state and say, geez, we want to keep this going because whatever. We have to show them why. The state never asked us why. That's right. They are now, right. though. No. You understand? They're asking for it now. You can't just do these things just because, and he's told us that. Right. We can't just do them because we want to keep the money. Okay, well, then that means probably a lot of. Why not? Keep, keep, keeping the money is good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, we, can, we can come up with the plan provided that our hands aren't tied. Our hands got tied April 5th. They had eight months before that, though. Um, can I ask a question? Yeah. yeah. You went to Lansing. You do it. That's what it sounded like, and they told you you could do streets uh, with tip of money. Do you have anything in black and white from them, yeah. like the law or something that says this is what you can do, or is just coming back to us saying, well, we went up there and they said this, but they won't penalize us for it? That's kind of the case because they themselves weren't, didn't really want to get into that can of worms. I don't think they wanted to open it up because they would have to start looking at every TIFA and every plan. Yeah, well, and if you look at the, back, uh, the last, uh, last page that I provided, this came from the uh, state notes. As of 2013, there were 634 plans in the state. Only 94 were being reported at that time. So the state themselves weren't going after it. Now they want to. They want the transparency. That's, that's good. I mean, they, it should be transparent. Everything should be. Well, I'm just saying that because but that, it, that, 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 that plan, there was a group that, that came, the infrastructure plan and the road committee plan came together and worked on it and worked on it and, worked <coughs> and came to what they could come to. And then you come up and put in the paper and around and say, we can do that with tip of money. And I'd like to see it in black and white. Okay, well... I don't have that. I don't even know if I was on the board at that time. I answer that. But also, it, it passed the audit. My question to that is, that is if we can redistrict, we can help in other areas, is why I, I've said that. Yeah. And I keep saying that, if we can redistrict. If you can redistrict. Okay, that's the new law coming in. Um, it may not be a new law, but that's something we learned back in September. Okay, it, it's that's you, why I keep bringing that yeah, up. It's how you can do it, but you haven't brought it to us. Well, that's why I'm asking for a committee to come together with the commission, the road committee, or the planning committee, and us sit together like Mr. Moran has placed before you tonight. And that's the question. Not that you can dissolve it or bring it back. Where The question is, will you get a committee together, put this on a shelf, let's meet once a week, to make sure it's something that we're not missing. That is what is before you tonight. Okay. Okay. Just so we're just so we're clear, the old law allowed you to amend the district. The new law allows you to amend the district. It's the same wording, word for word. You're Honestly. absolutely correct, Mr. Right. Davis. Right. Okay. The Can thing we, is, is we didn't know it. No, I understand. I understand. I just want yeah, to make sure you understand it's always been in the law. Yes. Sir. Can we ask you about they keep bringing up shelving or putting away. Can you answer to that question, please? Okay. Yes, I can. Good. Um, I answered that in my most recent opinion letter to you. Mm -hmm. I contacted the person who said that at your forum, mm -hmm. Mr. Casey. Uh, is that? Dan Casey. Dan Casey. And I also spoke, spoke to John Stern. There's no one provision in, in either the new or the old law, which are the same, that says here's a shelving concept what they're talking about is this is they're saying let your plans run their course stop your taxing distribute your money but don't do the resolution to dissolve the authority right so then you take the non-dissolved authority i'm just being dramatic here and you Put it on a shelf. Right. Therefore, let's say in a year, um, or twenty-five, or six months, or five years, 
there is a need or, or um, the city then sitting commission says you know this area let's 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 put a little fire under our TIFA board let's get something in place let's do the thing to start a develop a taxing plan because our authority is still there it's just dormant. that's what they're talking about so you do all the steps you stop the you let the current development plans expire you stop the taxing plan which you've already done you distribute your surplus money but you don't do the last thing you don't do the resolution to terminate the actual authority now I'm telling you in my letter, I find no provision in the law that says you can do that. I don't find any provision in the law that says you can't do that. But that's what they're talking about. And that's what was in my opinion letter. But Mr. you still Turner. have to get rid of the money. Yeah, you're starting all over. You, you, would, just, you would just later, no. you would just later at some later date, you'd have this authority. Because once you terminate the authority, you can't get a new one. Right? We all agree on that? Yes. 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 All right. Once you terminate, it's done. You can't old law, new law, future law, no more authority. So you don't terminate the authority. You just terminate, and that's why when I walked you through this at, in my presentation, I gave you the four steps <clears throat> to get there, the four steps to unwind it. You do the three steps to unwind it, and you don't do the four. Mr. Turner. So on that subject, and again, I disagree with your word terminate. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I listened to this, I went back, I listened to it several times, word for word, here's what Mr. Casey said. He gave an example at the meeting, the city of St. Clair mm -hmm. created an LDFA to fund House Industrial Park. After it was paid off, that, um, they suspended tax capture at that point, but kept the plan in place, right? 25 years later, the park needed major repairs. At that point in time, they elected to start collecting the tax again, uh, in his words, resume. They issued a bond to fund that repair work and, and return tax capture 25 years later. But they never terminated the plan. They just suspended <clears throat> capture, his words. Okay, um, emails to and from Mr. Casey okay. in the last couple of days and John Starin. Um, you can simply terminate the taxing plan if you have fulfilled its purpose, right? Yep. The development plan can be terminated and you can just keep the authority in place, which is what I just said. That's his shelving concept. So I said, um, my question to him was he's changed his tune because i word for word i wrote down well, what he said i'm just telling I've, I've got his emails right here okay um are you telling me that i can terminate the taxing plan i can let the current development plans expire refund the surplus money and do not dissolve the authority by resolution the authority mr casey could then stay alive and later do another development area with a new development plan and a new taxing plan in the future? And that was his response. The development plan can be uh, terminated. You can terminate the taxing plan and hold open the authority. He will not cite to a provision in the law that allows that. Okay. So do you understand that if we terminate and shelve it, if you can shelve it, we still have to give back the money? Okay. Yeah, you're giving it away anyways. Well, I, but we're all we're giving away everything but two percent. I understand that. So I the rest is going kind of, into the general fund. Never, so no, the general fund can still use that money for projects. You understand? So we're really what, not. What, all we're no, losing is two percent. What two percent are you? As revenue. That's revenue. Not, not as revenue. Not as you if if you look at the front sheet that I provided, I just did a quick. I mean, this may be incorrect, but just kind of a quick approximation on that first page. Um, through the calculations, about a third of our funding comes from the county and the college. Two thirds comes from the city. If at the end of TIFA, the, the financing, we have to give back the fund balances, I estimated the fund balances as of August 31st, <laughs> total between all three districts, districts to be $795,000. Two thirds of that would stay in the city, one third or $265,000 would go back to the county. 
I can show you some reports that Mr. Gaber used to pull out that disputes that. Okay. Is that, is that about right? I didn't do the calculation. We didn't do that. It was, I didn't say it was an official calculation. Right. I just kind of did it as what's the price. ballpark? What's the ballpark fund? Because, yeah, you're right. I mean, that calculation, how I'm coming up with two thirds, one third, that could just be an average. The actual calculation is going to be different, but it gives us that ballpark idea. We're going to lose up to $265,000. Now, yes. Right now, away. yeah. Right, like Elaine just said too, is, is the, the county has to agree to our calculation. Mm -hmm. So if we say we're going to base it on, I mean, what Elaine and I have talked about this. We've talked to the city auditor. We feel the best way to do this is to take the average of maybe the last five years, mm -hmm. seven years, whatever, whatever year we come up with. But the count, and then we have to send that to the county. That's what Bob was saying. Say this is how we want to do it. They have to agree to that. Now they could disagree and say, no, I, I feel that we should be doing it a different way. Then we'll have to negotiate mm -hmm. that. Um, but I do want to clarify about that two percent. I know I'm going mm -hmm. off a little bit here. What we lo are technically losing every year out of this plan is fifty-six thousand dollars. That's what we have. That's what we're losing. That $56,000 that we're losing is 2% of the city general fund operating revenue, just the general mm -hmm. funds. That's what I was stating yep. before, yep. was that's what we're losing. Mm -hmm. Okay, and going through with through our forum, what should have been happening, we, we pay back, we capture from the city and we pack the pay back through administrative services, mm -hmm. which we shall also have been doing paying back to the city for city services as far as like snow plowing, cleaning, Downing. street cleaning, maintenance, um, putting up decorations, the decorations. That all money could have been billed to each tip for district and paid back to the city, which then would have or decreased what the TIF overall was capturing. It would have been put back into the operating fund. We, we can do that moving forward. I mean, with this, this is what I mean. with the, no one knew this. Everybody was just it's under learning. the assumption, the entire city, of how we were operating was accurate. After this forum, we learned a lot, and there's a lot more to learn. We've just started scratching the surface. I mean, right now, you, we do get back all the $24,000. Right. Yeah, that's what I... Yeah. So, Mr. Mayor, may I, I just found the, the actual substantive email back from the county. Can I just read it? Sure. Because this goes to your shelving question. This is from Mr. Casey with um, John Sterren agreeing to this. If the development and the financing plan are completed, then the board as the authority still exists technically. Any funds remaining in the budget captured from another taxing authority would have to be returned to those authorities. The board can continue to meet and still pass an annual budget and file all the stuff due to the state and the Department of Treasury, even if there isn't any revenue coming in. At a future point, the board can adopt and develop a new development plan and a new financing plan and present it to the Your City Commission. Well, if they adopted a budget, what money are they using? <laughs> I'm just saying they have to continue to meet the filing requirements, even, oh. if, it, even if it's a zero report. <clears throat> so what he was that's his shelving concept and so then I asked him well what law do you um, base that on and he, 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 said, he said there's really no specific shelving provision mm -hmm. uh, but that's what he was saying so it's exactly what I said earlier you take the four steps and you just don't do the fourth mm -hmm. getting to Mary Ellen's um, I don't know if this was in the old TIF law uh, but there is a new section, it's section 212 of the new law. It's the new ad valorum. That I used to ad valorum, that's your tax. Uh, and this is kind of paraphrased, but an authority with approval of the municipality governing body may levy an ad valorum tax on the real and tangible personal property not exempt by law and is finally equalized in the downtown district of not more than two mills in the downtown, if the downtown district municipality has less than 1 million population which that's means I don't know if that's something in the old law but in the new law we can also capture two mills 
as an ad valorem tax. It's in the new law and the old law. Okay. The only problem with that is is because they also adopted a new personal property law, mm -hmm. and eighty thousand dollars would be the um, what their assessed their not their assessed value, but the true cash value. So forty thousand dollars they can be exempt from having to pay tax. Well, downtown district. Nobody really is going to be over forty thousand dollars, right? And they also just changed that law where they used to have to file that exemption form every year. Beginning in two thousand nineteen, they file it, and then they don't have to refile in the future. So, I'm just trying to tell sure. you, our downtown wouldn't really get anything from the personal property because the majority of those. But it's, it's also on the real exempt. property. Huh? It's on the real property. Is it on well, the real property? Yeah, it's it's real and tangible okay. personal. I think there's a lot to think about um, with this new found uh, information that we have. And that's why we need to move forward and uh, put that committee together. That's what we're here for tonight. Remember that. And Mr. Turner uh, has made a, mo you know, made a statement here, a motion. I don't know if it was a motion or the not. statement. Statement. And... Um, you guys got a tough job, and I hope you guys make the right decision. Can I ask one question? So yes. ultimately, what are you asking, that we shelve it and give you time to do something? I'm asking that we get a committee together oh, committee. with you folks, the road planning uh, group, and TIFA, and hash us out, like Mr. Moran said, in the next few weeks, meet once a week or whatever it takes. I know it's a big commitment. Um, to make sure we're doing the right thing and make sure that we're not doing the wrong. So are you going to get us the actual facts and figures that we've been asking for? I Because uh, you're still going to need that. The TIFA board will, will work our best to work with you guys and whoever that committee is to come up with those numbers. Maybe we ask Ms. Uh, McDonald to be part of that since she has uh, 30 years behind her with the uh, old TIFA. I don't know what that what that is, but it's only 30. that's something you guys have to decide on. <laughs> yeah. this is lovely. So, so, I'm just saying, so kind I, of to get back at Le, uh, Lisa's okay. question, yes, we're asking you to at least table or at least shelve yes. the TIFA and not do the resolution to terminate it, but also to extend the plans, we can possibly, through the plans, um, through the budgets, you know, maybe freeze the spending until a couple months until we can figure all this stuff out. There's a lot to disseminate. I think on the, uh, the, on the cover there of 10G, at the bottom you had what you're asking us to do. You're very specific. Mm -hmm. Pass a motion to rescind, pass a motion to put TIFA on hold, and pass a motion establishing a tripartite committee. I mean, it's all. Yes. Yeah. That's exactly what you want, is it? Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it's good, I think, that we have finally had a, a thorough public hearing uh, on this issue. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. No, it won't be short. Nothing short on this topic, <laughs> except for my bladder. <laughs> you can take it five minutes. Take it. Make a motion that we have a recess. Huh? I make a motion we have a recess. Yeah, yeah. Not, not yet. Not <laughs> yet. I, I promise I will be short. Uh, mm. what, what I'm hearing over and over and over here is uh, the, the TIFA board is being punished for not doing perhaps the best job uh, in, in uh, uh, providing information and moving plans forward. Let me ask this commission, how many of you have had training to be city commissioners? I see, I see two hands. How many of the, of the TIFA board members have had training in performing their task? There is a lot to be done in moving TIFA forward in this city. There's a lot to be learned. We need the time to do it. Stop punishing the commission or, or the, uh, the TIFA board for not giving you what you wanted. Let's get together and work together to get the information that we need to move this forward. There's a lot of work to be done in this city. So let's stop 
blaming and move forward progressively together. Okay? All right, what's the feeling of the commission? Do I have a motion? Mr. Turner. Motion to amend the schedule provided by city attorney dated January 12, 2007 to delay termination of TIFA on December 15, 2018. We can stick a time frame in there or we can leave it open-ended. Thus allowing our new city commission, TIF authority, and perhaps a, co a commission made up with uh, planning commission members uh, time to work together, update our current plan, and submit it to the state of Michigan. Support. Motion support. Do we have any more? <clears throat> Just so you're procedurally, that, that, I'm going to view that as a motion to rescind. I think it was notice was given, so it's a majority vote. It's not a two-thirds vote. Um, a motion to rescind cancels or vacates a prior decision of the board. <clears throat> Any more questions sure. I think you or concerns? Sure. I'll say yes. Is, well, we've got the motion. Never mind. I already had the motion on the floor. It's fine. We, yeah. you, you can discuss Is, after the motion. Okay. Yeah, we can discuss it. If Is this, uh, are we asking to shelve this? Is that what that's being asked? So it's not being asked. We're asking just to, to, rescind. To, to rescind the, okay, sure. the motion. Okay, the decision. There's no more questions. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Hendricks. No. Commissioner Callahan. How long do I have? Um, yes. Commissioner Clausen. No. Commissioner Lovely. Yes. Commissioner Turner. Yes. Mayor Van Bosch. No. Commissioner Avery. Please clarify again the yes or no. We're voting to rescind the, the previous action. Mm -hmm. Yes. I vote to rescind that action. So yes. Motion carries. Okay, what are we gonna do now? We've undone what we've done. Yeah, follow, follow the motion, yeah. put a plan together. Working with the three groups. It I was going to say there was, money, there was more to it. Jim, what was the rest of it? You're going to volunteer for that? Sure. But you're going to be gone. I'll volunteer. But As you're not going to be on the commission. You just uh -huh. asked me if I would volunteer. The answer is yes. Were you sarcastic? Or yes, were you too exactly cold? what okay. I was. I wasn't sure. I'll, be admit, I'll admit it. I'm sarcastic. Awesome. I didn't get up and walk out when I lost the vote. Um, yes, Ms. I just have one that question that's for you. Now that, for you, oh, <laughs> the city attorney. The expert. Now that they've rescinded this, that means that I'm supposed to capture now? <laughs> what he, the motion was to rescind the vote to follow the seven steps. Right. Which leads to the termination of TIF on December 15, 2018. <laughs> Right? Yes. Right. So, yes. Go ahead, Lisa. <laughs> no, you don't, have to, you, you don't have to worry about the money you've missed. You just have to resume capture going forward. So does that mean that I capture for winter tax? Yeah. Can I? So, I'm sorry. Yeah, so we had a motion. We had it on the floor for discussion. I didn't hear you say anything. We voted, it passed. I would say now we move on to the next agenda. Well, we, I just needed I know, but you can follow up. You can follow right. up after, after tonight. Right? Lisa. Well, I already got my answer. So okay, good. That's a new point. Lisa. Legally, what does that do with us with the state? Since we can't prove that these are good. Can't prove that. Yes, Mr. Avery. Yeah. Has the state come by and asked us to prove that this they will. has not been met? Uh, no. They will. Have been. Okay. No. Please. Okay. <clears throat> Please. Can we stick to the agenda and get, get through this? 
marathon? No, I'm going to drag it out. Raise your hand. I'm going to drag it out. Raise your hand. What do you want to do next? I'm not running this show anymore, apparently. Go ahead. You have a motion to move on to the next. Do I have to make a motion do we, to follow the agenda? Do we want to do put a committee Did together? Did you forget protocol? Would you like to put a committee together? I'm not going to be around. Okay. It's up to you. You're the man. No, apparently not. Moving on. <laughs> yes, Mrs. Lepley. I was going to say, I, I would make a motion uh, to establish a tripartite committee with the task and members as outlined above to review uh, the upcoming changes in law to TIFA and come up with a plan to use those changes in TIFA for the benefit of Marine City. That won't take long because there's no changes. There you go. I mean, the new law hasn't changed. It's not changing. So that's your motion? Yeah. I support that. Any questions or concerns on that? So who, how many people are we putting on this committee? They're just creating a committee of what, of who? How many of each? Well, they were talking about the infrastructure committee and planning TIFA committee. and the planning commission. How many? There's, of a, there's yeah, already five. You can't five put on the, the whole board and everything on the same committee. So, you, how we, many of you? Each? Mean representatives from each. Well, I'm the representative on the infrastructure committee for this. Mrs. Lovely, you made the motion. How many I, I committee did. members would you like? And I think that. Um, um, that at least two, uh, two, and not to exceed three members from each of the three. I would add that if the. So that's an amendment to your motion. Yes. I support the <clears throat> So we want three from. Two, the, at least two, two but not more up than to three. three. From the three boards. From the th from planning, the three TIFA, boards. and commission. Commission. Yes. commission. Yeah. Support. Any <clears throat> other questions on that? Yeah, how long are we going to give this committee? Are we going to take two years to do this like we did the last time? And in the meantime, we're collecting money, and it's going to sit there, and then we're going to have to do reporting, and we're going to have to uh, do whatever, but I don't see that um, I'm it's not, just another committee. I'm not clear. Is that, a, is that a direct question, or is that sarcasm? I'm not sure I understand. Probably both, but okay. go ahead. No, I'm just asking. Was that, oh, that was your question? Yeah, that was my okay. question. Do we have a time to a deadline that we want to bring this to or yeah I don't want to drag this out two years like we have the last time they had two years to do it now we're going to be sitting here for another two years six months six, I, months. I, six months is a long time too I say a month you got a month to come up with some type of plan and I think that's <coughs> adequate. my motion and I would say six months at least six months and two a year at the outside. two a year I would support six. that so maybe we need to go back through the entire motion here. Yep. I can read it. Please. Pass a motion establishing a tripartite committee with the task uh, and members as outlined above to review the upcoming changes in law to TIFA and come up with a plan to use those changes in TIFA for the benefit of Marine City. Those things outlined above are at least two and not more than three members from each of the three boards uh, to meet uh, weekly uh, for the first two months and then after that as necessary. So you get the road, road committee, the TIFA no. board, and the planning. No, no road oh, committee. Oh, you're just on there. Planning, planning city commission, okay. and TIFA. All right. And you're going to agree. Uh, she just reread that, so. Yeah, we are good. I would agree. Yep. As long as Lisa's okay. done talking, sure. Insane. I don't want to interrupt you. All right, stop, both of you. <laughs> but do, yes. Do we have a time? So you're going with a six-month timeline? Not to no. A year. No. I, I, I said they said they wanted to meet once a week, right. and that I don't want that. That can't go on forever. Right. Um, so I, uh, on that, I put a limit of up to three months and then as needed then they can meet as needed up to a year is that clear no it's not no, whatever I'm okay they meet <laughs> i can't i can't write that fast i'm gonna need it right okay <laughs> are we clear for a roll call vote any more questions <clears throat> 
yes Mr. I, I just want to remind everyone that if you if you get into amending the plans the districts or the boundaries it has to come back to the Commission for approval right right it would have to come to TIF of or too, also correct that so has to go to them first first, first and, then, and then ultimately you have to make that right. decision so you'll still have a say in any future approval of any plan okay and the yes. wording as i put it there to meet weekly up to three months and then as needed up to a year is there going to be a freeze on spending then till this plan comes into place I just, as when I, uh, this was a question that we had when we went, and, and this has nothing, this is not speaking to the motion, so I'll save it. <clears throat> do, do we need to freeze spending, though, until We already a have plan one comes in, in, but that was when, before we aborted the last plan. Two years worth of plan. All of your plans are expiring December 15th of this year. Mm -hmm. they're, expi they're expiring. So you have to take action. You're going to have to do something to extend those plans. You cannot spend money absent an up-to-date valid plan. Two of those plans were supposed to expire in 2016. They were extended. You, you, you extended them all to be on the same ex but mm -hmm. deadline. My point is that two of the three of them were already extended. Correct. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. And you got them all into the same date. Yeah. So they all, so yes, Mr. Avery, the third one when they're the done. That seems to indicate to answer the question that was just brought up. No spending until new plans are put in place. And the plans, of course, go through the city commission. But these meetings go in place so that this action can be completed. Okay. Um, legally, in, or, in order to have a taxing plan, you have to have a development plan in place. So we, <clears throat> I just need to know, I mean, are you keeping the plans in place? Are you going to extend them past December 15th? Because if, if you don't extend the plan, you can't tax without a plan. If you don't have a, and. Well, if it's as simple as we apply to extend the plans, then that's what should be done. I don't like to go too far since this is the end of my business here. Can we get something done? I want to get done with this meeting. Yes, yes Mr. May. Uh, if we don't extend the plan, then they do expire in 2016. Yeah. Yes. Yep. That should be in part of the consideration. Yeah. This this was this was the shelving concept that's why that's why it was raised at your forum was procedurally <coughs> it's just cleaner to do the shelving you you let the plans terminate stop the taxing plan shelve the authority and work on something in the future your motion is to just continue so you cannot tax continue to tax after December 15th of 2018 unless you have a plan in place. Your plans are expiring. So if you extend your plans, you could then tax. But you gotta have a reason you're taxing, a purpose. So that has to somehow get into your mix. Does that need to be a part of this motion or can that be, be separate? I mean. Since this plan is giving them up to a year, uh, I. Uh, could we add to that that we extend the plans for one year? The current, Ask to extend, the current apply plan. to extend the current plans for a year. Can we? You've extended your plans a couple of times. times. Yes. Yeah. And now you have them all in sync. In sync. For December 15th of 2018. So I'm, um, You I still would, have a couple meetings before that. Yeah. Um, and, and, and we have you know, as part of this motion that this is up to a year. So if we apply to extend the plans for up to a year, then in a year 
the new plans can be That's put in separate, place. Is though. that true? We have a motion on the floor right now. Yeah. A very concluded motion. I just have a question for the attorney. Now, if they approve to extend these plans for a year, wouldn't you have to get, do you have to get the approval of the county to capture? Mm -hmm. Yes. There's a lot to it. There's a lot of things that have to be done in a very short amount of time. Mm -hmm. Okay. They call for Do the you push. have the motion? You don't have all of it? I think that's the, the gist of it. With the proper term rescind yeah. being in there. Any other questions or concerns on it? I thought rescind was Roll call previous. vote, please. Let's take that back. Rescind was a previous motion. This is the new motion. Okay. Do you want me to repeat what I have again so yep. everybody knows what we're voting for? Sure. Okay, to a motion to establish a tri-party committee consisting of the Planning Commission, the City Commission, and the TIPA Board, now, consisting of at least two members, but not more than three, for each of the three boards, to meet weekly for up to three months, and then as needed for up to a year. Is that what your motion was? Okay, everybody clear on the motion? Um, I, think, I think there was actually a little more to it than that. To come up with a plan to use those changes in TIFA for the benefit of Marine City. That's Re review the upcoming there, changes and come yeah, up with a plan. Changes to use those options. changes yeah, for the benefit of Marine City. Yeah, that portion of it was. But okay. Roll call vote, please. Commissioner Callahan. Yes. Commissioner Clausen. <coughs> yes. Commissioner Lovely. Yes. Commissioner Turner. Yes. Mayor Van Bottom. No. Commissioner Avery. Yes. Commissioner Hendrick. No. Commissioner All right. What's next? <laughs> no. Perhaps We're agenda. gonna keep going. All right. Until we hit midnight. We well <laughs> um, do we have any more TIFA stuff we have to pass? You should get my keys. See if we can lengthen her out a little longer. Do we have? Wasn't there one more thing on that? Well, oh, no, that is the last one. Motion okay. To put TIFA on hold pending for the further All right. Moving on to financial disbursements, including payroll of $258,834.36. Yes, Mr. Avery. I make a motion that we approve disbursement for payroll of $258,834.36. Support. You got a support over here. <clears throat> support. <laughs> Any questions or concerns on disbursements? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Uh, Commissioner Clausen. Yes. Commissioner Lefley? Yes. Commissioner Turner. Yes. Mayor Vanabash. Yes. Commissioner Avery. Yes. Commissioner Hendrick. No. Commissioner Kelly. Yes. Okay, moving on to resolution number 027-2018, Corrective Action Plan. This is um, a new requirement by the state of Michigan that <coughs> um, if you fall below the 40% funded and, the 12, and you're greater than the 12% of the annual determined contribution of governmental fund revenues, you have to have a corrective action plan to take care of your unfunded liability. And, and the pension was okay, it's just on the retiree health care. 
So that's what this resolution is doing. It's adopting this corrective action plan that we have attached. And what basically is happening is currently we already pay for, it's called pay as you go, or we cover our expenses. The difference is in this corrective action plan is there would be an additional $12,000 annually also um, remitted to the retiree health care plan. And we would be fully funded by 2049, which falls into the parameters as established by the state. Yes, so you're saying what we're currently paying, you're adding another 12000 per year to make up the difference for the mm -hmm. next? Okay. Yes. Correct. Okay. I think that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty. <laughs> what we thought it was going to be. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yes, Mr. Avery. I make a motion that we <coughs> adopt resolution 027-2018. Support. Motion support. Any questions on it? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Mr. Lovely. Yes. Mr. Turner. Yes. Mayor Vanderbosch. Yes. Mr. Avery. Yes. Mr. Hendrick. Yes. Sorry. Mr. Callahan. Yes. Mr. Clawson. Yes. Moving on to resolution number two or zero two eight dash two zero one eight, funding retiree health care plan. So what this basically is, is we've adopted the corrective action plan, and this is now making a resolution that you are going to commit to that funding, which is to cover your, your mm -hmm. annual expenses plus an additional $12,000. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 028-2018 to adopt funding for the retiree health care plan for $12,000. I second that motion. Motion second. Do we have any more questions or concerns? Hearing none, roll call vote. Mr. Turner. Yes. Mayor Vandenbosch. Yes. Mr. Avery. Yes. Mr. Hendrick. Yes. Mr. Callahan. Yes. Mr. Clawson. Yes. Mr. Lovely. Yes. Mr. Moving on to resolution number 02. 9-2018 budget amendments. Okay, we may, you know, normally I only do them once a year and it's at the end of the fiscal year. <clears throat> but um, the reason I um, needed to do it now is because of the road, mainly was because of the road paving project that was a major expense that was not included in the budget. And yes, it's all done and over with, but at least now we've approved it and it's part of the budget. Um, I'm going to ask you if you want me to go through the each of the budget amendments, or do you want to sure. just sure? Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> we've been here a long time. Oh, we have. <laughs> okay, so if you'll go to page six. We've got a meeting every week now. <clears throat> and on page six, it's the general fund. Um, I've increased the um, revenue of the salvage recertification fees mm -hmm. by 11400 and mm -hmm. the offsetting expenses in the special projects uh, department. Um, I will tell you that this pro the person that we were using for this is no longer doing it for the city of Marine City. He went back to Marysville, so the program's pretty much done now. Um, unless the police chief decides to you know, we establish it, but from my understanding, he said, no, we're not gonna do this anymore. Um, the next item is um, we received uh, $3,000 for donations, the offsetting expenses in the parks department. Under general fund expenditures, under office supply, um, a new computer was purchased for the city manager. Um, so there was an additional 1475 that was added there. Um, the actuarial services that, um, we have, it, we could not, now with the new changes in the account numbers, it, it used to fall under all under professional services that no longer exists anymore, so I had to create this. And what I did is I increased the actuarial services by 4,000 and took it out of the attorney at Corporation Council. So that offsets that. 
than I ex already explained to you about the special projects. So bottom line is, is that um, the um, estimated year-end fund balance went from $1,320,440 to $1,320,109. Any questions? Okay, we'll go on to the major street. This is the street paving project. That was the only change that's done here. And as you can see, um, the um, expenditures exceeded the revenues um, by $76,365, which we will um, be taking out of our fund balance, which leaves us an estimated fund balance at the end of June 30th, 19 of $531,269. Next is your local, this is the local street portion for the same type of street paving. Um, the uh, cost is $84,760. So there is a deficit um, at the end of the year of $84,460 that comes from fund balance. An estimated fund balance at June 30th, 19 is $266,273. But I will tell you something. If we we did receive some of that additional street funding that the state gave us. We are putting it all in here, but that funding came after I did these budget amendments, so at year end, this is gonna yeah. change because we received one payment um, this month, or in October, and we're gonna receive another one in January. So that'll help take care of that 84,000. Um, the last is your drug law enforcement fund, and the um, there was nothing cap, uh, that was budgeted here, and this was for uh, <clears throat> the police chief chose to use his drug law enforcement funds for the traffic laser and vehicle improvements. So it was taking it from the fund balance, which leaves an estimated year in fund balance of ten thousand eight hundred forty eight dollars. I'll make a motion to approve resolution zero twenty nine two hundred eighteen for the. Um, to amend the uh, budget. Support. Motion support. Any questions on it? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Yes. Commissioner Avery. Yes. Commissioner Hendricks. Yes. Commissioner Kelly. Yes. Commissioner Clausen. Yes. Commissioner Lovely. Yes. Commissioner Turner. Yes. Commissioner Curry. City Manager's report, please. So I've attended quite a few meetings since my last report. Um, I attended an MML informational event that was focused on recreational marijuana and road warranty issues. For the recreational marijuana, with the potential change in the laws should the vote pass uh, Tuesday, uh, that, if it does pass, will not take effect until probably sometime in the first week of December. So there will be a period there where we may want to potentially consider whether or not we're going to want to allow for any medical, I'm sorry, recreational uh, facilities in the community. Um, one thing to take into consideration, listening to uh, an attorney that was speaking at this forum about it, it looks like there may be an exemption for any type of uh, sales facility in residential areas. Um, haven't had the attorney take the time to look into that yet to um, fully determine and vet if that is completely accurate or not. Uh, I didn't really want to spend the money for the attorney to review it. There's going to be some and, distance requirements too. So. Yeah, so um, that's something that we may be in a position where we may need to act quickly based upon that vote if we want to prohibit. If we want to allow, we in essence would not need to do anything. This is the opposite of how things were with the medical marijuana. With the medical marijuana, if we did not want any facilities, we did not have to take any action. With the recreational marijuana, if we do not want any, we have to take action. So it's kind of the opposite. So I just wanted to make sure that you were informed about that that's coming up. Um, regarding the road warranties, this is something that has come down from the state and communities are going to be required to pass ordinances or resolutions that in essence affirm the, the state program for road, war, road warranty work. Uh, the good side of that is, is that you won't be required to do any of the paperwork reporting or the road warranty um, information and having your bidder do that if the project's under two million. 
put this in perspective, the millage that we're looking for for the, the five years is 1.5 million. So even five years of work, we wouldn't get to the threshold <coughs> for the projects. Um, it also does happen to exclude any bridge work and any underground work. So if you have a project that you're doing water and sewer underneath the road, you would not include that as part of your calculation for the two million for a project. Um, I also att attended some disability awareness training up at the um, underground in Port Huron. This was something, if you remember, we did have a violation with the state for ADA compliancy for our office, and I felt it was something important to get a little more education regarding people with disabilities and how to help accommodate. Um, it was, in essence, a portion of a module that um, there's an organization that does some training in, and it was very informative, and potentially that's something in the future that we could have a class or something here in the community to help people understand it better. Um, I also participated in the DEQ Clean Diesel Grant webinar. Um, this was a grant that it looked like there was the potential that we could get some grant funding to upgrade some vehicles in our DPW um, to move from a lower, um, lower uh, value for MPG um, functionality to something that's more efficient. Um, unfortunately, there's not a lot of vehicles that we have that would be eligible for this program. Um, there are year constraints and type constraints. Um, most of the vehicles that we have that would be eligible, we've already converted to gas engines that uh, meet the efficiency. About the only vehicle that we actually have that we're looking at that would potentially be an option is our street sweeper. And that's something that I think we've had some conversations about in the past and question the functionality of it. So that might be <clears throat> something we want to look at in the future. Um, it actually sounds like this is a grant that is an annual basis. So that's something that we could really pick up at any time and discuss. Um, I also attended the county planning training. Uh, that's something that they've done on an annual basis and from now on it looks like they're going to be shifting it to a semi-annual basis. The topics that they focused on uh, this last time was Airbnb and um, focusing on ordinances between uh, general ordinances and zoning ordinances. Uh, with the recent change that we had in the rental inspection ordinance, we kind of addressed the issue with the Airbnb as far as if you rent something out a day or 365 days a year, it's a, it's a rental and we require it to be um, registered through our rental program. Uh, that was one of, I think, the best options that really came out of that discussion. The other option was to put it in your zoning code, however that creates some conflicts. So um, it was nice to get a little bit of an affirmation that we went in the right direction with addressing that. Um, pension, uh, met, I, I was at the pension meeting. Uh, we went through the actuarial um, pretty extensively detailed and that was in your communication. Um, we have the new company that has provided that information. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that we did have two years worth of the actuarial for the um, pension in this packet and that was because the previous actuary um, had been late in providing that information for us. Um, I met the new East China Township manager, uh, Cindy. She is very nice. I've uh, already crossed paths with her several times and uh, hope to have a good working relationship with her as our, one of our neighboring managers. Um, other than that, um, I would like to thank the commissioners that are going to be uh, leaving their terms this evening. It's been a pleasure getting to know all of you and work with you. I've definitely learned quite a bit from all of you and in our own unique ways from each of you. Um, and other than that, everybody get out and vote. Um, I think the clerk would ec echo those sentiments as well. And that's it. Any questions for the city manager? <clears throat> Hearing none, moving on to Commissioner Privilege. Mr. Avery, would you like to start us out for the last time? 
as this is my last opportunity to expound on civics and patriotic thoughts, I will spare you that. <laughs> so, goodbye. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for the privilege of serving uh, Marine City, and I will continue to serve in other ways. And um, uh, an old Italian proverb tells us we are stronger when we work together than any, any of us can be alone. And I hope we will uh, move forward in a very cooperative way. And I was always taught, uh, you know, you end everything with a joke. Here's one from my granddaughter. What do you get when you cross a dinosaur with a pig? <laughs> Jurassic pork. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Clausen. I would just like uh, <clears throat> to uh, literate uh, everybody get out and vote. Uh, if you want uh, uh, a good road to drive on, then get out and support the millage. And uh, <coughs> the uh, roads are a lot better. Drive on the two that we already completed. It's a five-year program, and it's just for roads. I had somebody ask me the other day about, well, are you going to pave the road and then dig it up and put, uh, put sewer and water under there? We've already gone through that through the infrastructure committee, and they will not do roads that the, under, that the, the infrastructure is not in good shape. So we're tearing up a good road. So thank you and get out and vote. I just want to um, thank uh, Commissioners Lepley, Avery, and Turner for their years of service to the city. I'm sure we'll see you around in some capacity. Um, I know it probably always hasn't, as tonight hasn't always been pleasant, but um, you stuck through and worked together and got the job done. So thank you. Heather, I want to make a comment about this evening. You know. The, I don't think we're up here telling you that the project's not a good project. It's a good project. You probably feel like you've been working on it forever. Um, what we're doing right now is we just got to cross a few T's and dot a few more I's on it. That's all. And uh, we'll get it done. We'll get part of it done. So, and um, other than that, I just want to um, everybody get out there and vote. And Tuesday's a big day. And then maybe Wednesday we can quit listening to the campaigns on TV. <laughs> Lisa. Nope, nothing for me tonight. I just want to reiterate and thank the commissioners for years of service. It, we, get, we get worked up up here and we get frustrated and we get adulation all on the same night, but it's, it's a tough job and I thank you for doing it. Um, also, please, everyone get out and vote. It's very, very important. Um, that helps us get decision makers that, you know, think like you. And if you want, you know, change done or you want the status quo, whatever you want, you need to vote for candidates that mirror your opinion. So please take the time. It's your civic duty. Let's get it. Let's, let's get a nice high vote turnout this time. Uh, we did real well the last time. So other than that, uh, I need a motion to go into closed session. The city commission will enter into closed session for the consideration of the city manager's evaluation for the MCL 15.2868. Uh, there may or may not be any action taken upon returning of the to the open session. I'll make a motion to go into closed session. Support. Motion support. Any, uh, that'd be a roll call vote, please. Commissioner Avery. Yes. Commissioner Hendricks. Yep. Commissioner Callahan. Yes. Commissioner Clausen. Yes. Commissioner Lovely. Yes. Commissioner Turner. Yes. Mayor Van Yes. Commissioner Harris. Now.